Hello, everybody, and welcome to Save or Die Outcast. How are my favorite players in the whole world doing today? Me, myself, oh. and I are doing amazing right now. Let's move on to the game. No one else talks. <laughs> you know, what does it take for someone to move to Ireland? Uh, do, you, well, do you accept foreigners? Money. We do, actually. Um, you need to have a critical skill or uh, invest in a business here. Or find mm. a hot, red-blooded Irish woman, uh, presuming you're a man, or... You know, actually, I think just marriage works these days. It doesn't need to be gendered. Um, yeah. I Find swear a hot Irish to person. Lead into the fucking D&D campaign. We said we wouldn't do 15-minute intros anymore, guys. Can we get the fuck on? I'm sorry. Uh, do you have, have a hot you got a clock going? I... <laughs> that depends on who's asking. And why? This guy right here. <laughs> the algorithm is unforgiving. 50% of our viewers have already clicked off the video by this point, guys. This video is fucked. We might yeah, well so stop you're and in come back next side. week. We're in Swampside. We're killing some time. You're doing some things. There's a whole bunch of things that people want to do. What is it that we want to do? Jamie, you wanted to find friends. You wanted to buy friends. Buy friends? <laughs> yes, I wanted to... So how, how much time, downtime are we having? And I'll kind of Two months. give you my thoughts. Two months, okay. Two Ren months? Oh my is God. an experienced wilderness man with swamp survival. He also has two dogs and animal tra training and animal handling. Um, which would make him a pretty good scout, like someone who could lead people through the the the, the maw, right? So, right. if there are people who need a swamp guide in the area, he's going to spend some of his time doing that to earn a little bit of side cash. Because I feel like the combination of all those skills mm -hmm. and all those resources should at least cover some of my costs, right? I don't know how much swamp work there is in Swampside. I mean, it's only called Swampside, right? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's got to be no swamp work there, right? It's like right. It's like expecting there to be farming in a town called Stardew Valley. You know, it just wouldn't happen. Um, but uh, the other side of things is I'm putting the feelers out. I'm asking people, hey, like, do you know any soldiers looking for work? Do you know any, like, young dudes? Or not even necessarily soldiers. I'm like, are there any, like, plucky young teenage boys who have a thirst for adventure and want to learn how to swing a sword or a dagger? And maybe I could be like, hey, kiddo, you know, if you hold this this way, you know, how would you like to join a caravan, an adventuring party, you know? Yeah, or, you uh, can absolutely find some thirsty young boys looking to get their hands on steel. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I offer them... Sorry. you set the, it up so easily for me, I could not. I'm... I offer them the base rate... I'm, I'm eating Fisherman's Friends, by the way, which we're not sponsored by, but these are delicious. Um, I'm... <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. <But> someday. <laughs> yeah. I'll, hit, um, I'll hit them up. <laughs> yeah, hit them up. The... Uh, yeah, I will offer them... The, you linked a thing, an economic sheet that I have lost. Oh, yeah. So, so I can get you um, that. I'll get a team for him. Fuck, what's that? Um, the economic sheet. I was going to offer them like laborer wages. I think it's like a copper a day or something. Let me double check what that was. Put it in the production channel. Oh, she's way faster than me. I bookmarked. Uh, jobs. You want to like... go to the jobs tab? Yeah. Yeah, it's like 250 copper a month for these guys, which is like what? 2.5 silver? No, no, no. 25 silver a month for these guys. Mm -hmm. Um,. So I'm looking to get two young, plucky kids who want to learn how to be footmen and could potentially earn three times as much money, right? Okay. I'm, I'm going to train so them we're looking for So we're looking for unskilled, but people that you can invest in now and reap potential from later, right? We're not trying to hire the, the existing mercenaries who are already tainted by the local culture and maybe already have alliances or allegiances. We're looking for people that you can shape into who you want them to be down the road. Exactly. I'm looking for two young uh, teenagers. Doesn't matter who they are, what they're from, what their stats are, because all they have to do is... Um, guard and learn basic defensive combat how to fight equally skilled people off fantastic um you're gonna find two of these people they're gonna be great and they're going to be named by your fellow party members nick what's the name of one of these youths um <clears throat> let me just consider you can Rory. check the npc suggestion i'll check the npc suggestions let me do that see suggestions uh, Melvin, yeah, Melvin. Ooh, I like Melvin. Yeah, Melvin. I would. Melvin should be a girl. I'm calling it now. Okay, Melvin. Melvin, 
and Jan, what is the name of the other one? Uh, I don't, I don't have the NPC suggestions open, so I'm gonna go with Rudy. 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 Oh. Right. Melvin and Rudy. I like them. <clears throat> okay. Excellent. These are your two youths. They live mm -hmm. here in Swampside. So when you're in town in Swampside, you don't have to really um, like that. They have a place to stay. They'll live with their parents and whatnot. But as you travel around, you're going to have to pay their other expenses. We will fold in their travel expenses with you into our greater travel economic sheet. Um, I'll just do some math as we go through this process and come up with new full numbers for you. But it is going to cover like their in rooms, any food while you're traveling, you know, repairs to shoes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the 25 silver a month is just the cost to hire them. Yes. But if you're you're moving them, it's going to be a little bit more. Oh, yeah. They, um, as part of like the, I'm like, I have very clear and explicit conversations with these guys. Listen, you guys are going to be bottom of the rung. But when I'm done with you, you're going to be capable footmen who are going to be able to earn a reliable living wage, um, which is why you're going to be sleeping in the stables. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Not in the room. Nice. <laughs> so we save a little bit. Of, like we don't actually have to change how much it costs to maintain them, but I want that to be the role play. Like these guys are yeah. they're roughing it as part of the party. Excellent. Uh, all right. Did anyone else want to hire uh, somebody, Mr. Moon? You had said you were looking for a, a rudimentary squire. I'm looking for something very specific, Neil. I want mm -hmm. to talk around, you know, at the local orphanage, and I'm looking for a kid oh, who. Not again. <laughs> I'm looking for a kid who wants to be a knight, um, but would never have, you know, the opportunity. Or at the bare minimum, someone who gives, like, I've always wanted to be an adventurer, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, if I don't hear yeah. that, that's okay. I'm going to look somewhere else. But I very specifically want a child who, or, you know, like a 15-year-old-ish, who wants to be a knight. Mm -hmm. And who has no family. Well, they can have a family. I don't care. Okay, well, you it doesn't have to just be the local orphanage. Know how um, I'll also, also, you know, talk to the local farm boys and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, Okay, if we're, if we're having a, casting a broader net, then you're going to be able to get better candidates. Definitely. None of these crappy orphans, the unwanted cast-offs of... <laughs> I can't even say what the shirt is. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, you get some pretty solid... You will get yourself someone who wants wants out of their life who wants adventures who wants travel who wants combat who wants to wear armor one day you know who wants to ride a horse who wants to anything other than living in the fucking swamp and having to pull reeds and grab catfish with their arms and get mold between their toes because they're damp all the time they hate the damp um and jamie would you name this squire why well, do i have a question before i at, oh. like i invite him to join the party <clears throat> well um, I want to know if they want to abide by the Knight's Code, and I will give them the rundown of what that is. Like, there was, like, a what is old it? code, right? I mean, different places, different times, warrior codes varied a lot. <laughs> the Knight's Code of Chivalry, specifically. Uh, to fear oh, God like and an maintain English his one, church. Right? Yeah, like, we'll just do the English one, you know? All right. <clears throat> I want him to live by a code. If you guys, if you guys are incorporating people into the party, um, there needs to be some understanding that like, Grau is not going to reveal to these people that he's a druid. Um, <laughs> so we need to figure out like logistics to where we can't. It, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit complicated mm -hmm. because they can't like be around. But we can obviously keep up a charade and everything, right? It'll be funny, but. We can't make it very obvious to these people that I'm a fucking bear. That's mm. is, is my main thing. That's the goal is to be a hard one. It's gonna be hard, yeah. but the goal is for these people just to kind of maintain our camp when we go and do stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, but what if you're traveling and you have to camp somewhere overnight? Yeah. He turns into a bear every time he sleeps. Yep, like unless you're gonna put these people in a, you know, make them camp, you know, a, a mile away from you, they're gonna realize he's a bear. Like, this is a point of conflict, I think, you guys bringing in new Ooh. people into the group like this. I never um, actually yeah. considered this, bringing people in about the secrecy edition. I was thinking more like, these are young, impressionable kids. We can probably explain this away in some way that's just like, oh yeah, he like, he was cursed to turn into a bear when he goes to sleep. I just feel like 
whether or not it's gonna have consequences of the game, I feel like from a character perspective, like Ground knows the consequences of people finding out that he's a druid. He's and he's also like not willing to like one of the things he knows is that he's not telling people that he's a bear unless he really trusts them, unless they really have to know. Right. Um So it's gonna take some time, right? I mean there's maybe a there's a path through here where because you know, for normal travel, Grau can sleep in the woods and just join back up with us in the morning and it'll be suspicious, but we won't necessarily have to give away his secret. There might be situations, like Neil said, where we're, like, trapped in a cave or something like that, and there's... Or, yeah, if we're just in combat, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, or we're... Well, hopefully they wouldn't be in combat, but... If, yeah, if I don't our, think these are going to be combat. But if our camp got attacked, that could happen. So I guess the question is, do you feel like you could get... Like, is it possible to get to a point where you might trust them that you'd feel okay with it, or is it always going to be, like, a problem? Uh, probably. I mean, yeah, but... I mean, these so, are, like, young teenagers. I feel like... I mean, like, you could explain this to Grau at some point. I think he'd be okay with it. But I also... I, I guess, like, in character, for sure, yeah. No, we, we could... So, we I, could so I guess maybe there's a bit of a tension there in terms of we've got to try and get you comfortable with the idea before mm. we find ourselves in a situation where it's going to be a big detriment. I think we're going to have yes. to roleplay it when these characters are there. But for the for this downtime, as these new people are joining the party, Grau will avoid, like, hanging out with them. Yep. Yeah. Hanging well, I think... around them. I think the way we can play it is just like when a point of conflict comes up, we will see how it plays out, and I think that's the simplest way. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. So... We're gonna say that you find Melvin and Rudy while August is still looking for his squire. Mm -hmm. And one day, you're gonna bring them by to show to the party. To be like, hey, I got our laborers, the people who will watch our stuff while we're doing things. Um, yeah. The party must be hanging out at that tavern near the magic shop where that fight went down with the frog so long ago. Um, the party's just hanging out there, and let's get all that, some tavern, some low-key tavern music going on. There's some soldiers, there's some Verasi guards, there's some local constables, and then there's just a bunch of, like, local people also hanging out in here. Um, I, um, yeah. I go, I go to the bar and buy them couple of drinks and it's just the two guys just melvin and rudy right yep yeah <clears throat> i put the drinks down i sit next to one of them and i'll make small talk with them and eventually i'm gonna say uh so i don't know if we're heading out soon but uh i've got a little trip that i might need to go on in the next few days uh do with some accompaniment on the road if the two of you wanted to uh come along and get to know each other a bit better they immediately look to uh, Renatus for like, oh, is this something I, that we do? What, what's our to, job here? I say to Ren, like, uh, I need to go and copy a spell down from the walls in the tomb. Yeah. Um, I turn to the two guys. This is, this is what you're hired for. You're, you're guards. You're going to protect uh, Sakara. We'll get okay. to know each other. Good. Uh, we'll would leave you like me to come with you? I ask. Or would you like me to stay behind so you can test him out? You can come along if you want. I assume that you had better things to be doing. But uh, I was going to go on my own, but since we're paying for these guys, we might as well uh, make use of them. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, I'll spend a little bit more time scratching around for some work for us here. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to be learning some spells in my downtime. One of them is from the spellbook I stole, and one of them is from the tomb. So I figured you'd probably say... Well, you've got to go back to the tomb to copy that down. So I think we can just do that in the downtime. I don't think we have to necessarily roleplay unless you think it's important, but I think we yep, can just say fine. that Arrakis goes with Melvin and Rudy to the tomb for a day or two to copy the spell and then go back to Swampside. Yeah, that seems fair. Cool, so I get to know them a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Melvin is... We, we hired you. So Melvin, the woman, is 17 years old. And her favorite deity is Nadinus. She's about 5'7". Um, and she seems particularly motivated by money. Like, she's she's out to do all of these things, but getting some money is really what her goal is. That, that affords her all sorts of opportunities in life. And she's really sort of, you know, she's here to make that bread. <clears throat> she got, like, gear and stuff. She got armor. She got sword. No. 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 She's got sandals and trousers and a shirt. 
Yeah, so I think I, I will buy her a short sword before we go on. I will buy them both short swords before we go on this journey. Like, and, uh, well, in, in fact, I say to them, like, do you guys not have any armor as we're leaving the, as we're about to leave the town? No, we're, we're just hired to move bags and watch horses, I thought. I was told that we weren't needed to fight. Oh, that you kind know, I'm not of a God. warrior. I kind of got. Yeah, um, I'm not a fighter. I'm not a warrior. I'm not okay. trying to get myself killed. No, no, I, misun I, I misunderstand. Don't worry. I, my magic will keep us safe. There's no need to worry at all. Let's hmm. go. Okay. Rudy, on the other hand, 19 years old, his favorite god is Astaire because he just wants things to, like, fit into their right place. He wants everything to have a place where it goes, and at the end of the day, you put the things in the spot. And otherwise, he's kind of quiet. He's kind of chill. He's really tall. He's, like, 6'1", but he's got that, like, awkward gangliness of a, you know, a tall youth who hasn't quite filled out all the way mm -hmm. yet. Uh, but he's orderly, and he's quiet, and he's organized. And, and there you go. That's what we know. Okay, cool. Um, so while I'm traveling as well, I'm, I'm spent, the main thing I'm spending the two months doing is trying to restock my shop. Um, so I'll probably use them to help, like, you know, collect things on the road as we're traveling, mm -hmm. where we stop, things like that. So I'm not saying we need to track it, but I, I'll try and fill up some stuff back at the shop. Yeah. Yeah, you start filling up your shop with the things that are easy to fetch, and you've got people to do the labor for you. You no longer have to wade through the cactus to get to those fruits. You can send the two kids off to you know, pick the fruits, and you can keep your gloves on and keep your hands free from prickles, which then, like, swell, then are kind of painful and awkward, yeah. and they get in the way of your gesticulations. Totally. Absolutely. Good. Um, but the reason I wanted to talk about this was to see how this is going to interact with the bear, and then you immediately took them away for like a month where they can't interact with the Good bear. Job, Nick. No, 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 so no. smart. Not a month? Is it a month? Okay, maybe it is. You said you were going to take some way. time to go, and it's a bit of a travel. It's and... a swamp side. Yeah, I guess it does take a while. Yeah. Um, so while they're away, Mr. Moon's going to find his squire. A squire who's willing to follow the knight's code. And I got something to ask him, because I have written something. Oh, love uh, it. <clears throat> so I'm going to explain to him. You're going to follow me. What? What's your name? Chad. You're going to follow me? No, it's Digi, okay? From no, it's the patrons. Chad. No, it's not Chad. His I've already had a Chad. Chad Barbo in the past. It can't be Chad. Okay, it's fine. It's Digi Wait, from me Ethan. Him. <laughs> okay, fine. Rename him. Give me two seconds. Yep. Her name is Stacy. Okay, Stacy. Sure. Oh, I see. I haven't added Stacy. It's fine. <laughs> Stacy, if you're going to follow me. I need you to know that a knight is supposed to show bravery, strength, skill, and beauty in battle. You must respect others, defend the weak and the poor. You must be generous to others and loyal to me, your family and your friend. You must behave at all times with courtesy and beauty, which means not just being polite or having good manners, but showing kindness, respect, and thinking about the feelings of others. Now, some of these things I've even had trouble with in the past, <clears throat> but I hope that I can be a good teacher. Yes, she's on board with these things. These are great concepts. She's looking to learn not just how to fight, but how to excel. And she's too poor and from too low of a family to ever have gotten squired with a proper knight. But here's this random nobody who seems to know what being a knight is all about. And so she's rolling the dice on this thing. And this is the, the tutelage she was looking for. Would you send me that that yep. script you just have? I got it for you here in the DMs. Um, and her name is Stacy. Are you going to make her recite that like every week? It's like, you need to recite the oath. You got to remember that shit. This is what August was taught, in including for the chatters, uh, there's stuff about beauty in here because August's family is all about Chis, the god of beauty. Mm. Excellent. All right, <clears throat> so you've got Stacy. And well, uh, uh, I have okay, one more question. Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> if I'm gonna teach her how to fight, does she need to fight with the same weapon that I use because I know how to fight with a glaive? Or- Well, you also have other weapons at your disposal, right? I don't have other weapon proficiencies. Really? You just have glaive and bow? That's all you have? I'm saving them for later. I got my <laughs> mastery coming up. Unrealistic. 
<laughs> I'm saying you can only teach her glaive and bow. You cannot teach her anything else. Fine. You For don't now, know anything else. I will else. be teaching her how to shoot a bow. And I, I, I will teach our camp guards and her, if she wants, arming sword and dagger, if they need. Oh, that's good. I will probably ask, Ren, is it is it possible that you could help me again um, with teaching Stacy here how to use an arming sword? I know that I never picked it up from you, but as you were the <clears throat> finest fighter in the land after myself, I think that you could be very good at that. You did teach me after all. Ren's eye will twitch at that little kind of like after myself. And he'll say, <clears throat> yeah, it, it is interesting to be surpassed in my <clears throat> old age. Um, but of course, no problem. I will absolutely help her. Uh, learn I notice your ability. I notice what you're putting down, and I'll kind of like look to you, and I'll kind of like go like that at the kid. That was a. If you understand, you understand. If you don't, you don't. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, Garp never defeated her. Ren in a one v one. I will say that. Mm. Uh, I will happily teach her the skills that you require me to teach her. <clears throat> And I will actually bow respectfully my head to Garp slash August. Bow back. Okay. How does Stacy sound, Neil? Can we hear her voice? Uh, let me let me come up with Stacy's <clears throat> deets real quick. Um, oh, are you gonna roll it? I have a, a tool that I use for doing these things. Oh, should I uh, roll her, her stats since we're taking her? Yeah. Why don't you roll her stats? We'll adjust them a little bit because, as you said, she's only like 15. So her int wisdom, charisma, and strength are not what they are going to be. So mm-hmm. roll them and uh, assign them however you want, and then I'll knock the other ones down a wee bit. Roll seven. Got a 14 in there. It's not bad. Uh, what did she get? She, oh my god. That's, uh, it's just, cla- it's eight, just my seven, classic 11, rolling. 14, 11, 9, 5. Woo! Let her rearrange now. No, I can yeah. rearrange it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, please do. I'll arrange it later. It's not important now. Yeah, okay. I, I yeah, just yeah. typed those numbers down somewhere. Like, take a screenshot. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, those, so those are grim Stacey. rolls. Stacy. Right. Um, She's young. She's young, yeah. Stacy. Lucky for you is ambidextrous. Nice. Great promising trait in a new warrior. Uh, she's 5'9". She's fairly cheerful for a, a youth in these days. And like many people from Swampside, she's got a strong connection to nature and the swamp and Nadinus in particular, uh, even though she's, you know, in the Verasi Empire, but she's still within this kingdom and more importantly, this local town where the other gods are still... Um, approached and loved so she's kind of got a happy cheerful disposition always looking on the bright side of life always looking to learn things when met with a challenge she responds by thinking of it as a like a a fun obstacle to overcome or a problem to solve rather than a a real setback so super positive attitude i'm going to start teaching her in we're going to hold like mass in the mornings before we head out um Mm. you're going to see like a change in august to where He's, you, he's doing a lot of the things that he would do back home, but since he's been out, he hasn't been following his own code. So hopefully this is going to like bring him back on the track that he used to be in. Um, but mm. in the morning, they're going to hold mass for like cheese, and he's going to be like doing like a little bit of like a Bible study um, about his great deity, and she has to follow him, and he's going to be doing trainings at night and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> All right. Can do. She's on board. She's here to learn. Uh, now, we got to talk about the cost of Stacy. Stacy, unlike her mom, is not free. Stacy is going to require a certain amount of oh, money. Um, I know, it's right there. What are you going to do? <laughs> uh, she's going to require a certain amount of wages, and she's also going to require upkeep as you travel around. Now, a traditional like light footman usually earns about 75 silver a month. She's not quite a light footman, yet she's still in training but she does should earn a little bit more than the 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 day laborer so let's put her halfway between do we have anyone that makes 20 um she's gonna earn 50 silver a month under your employ 
is it possible <sighs> that I could like buy her from her family? <laughs> not as like a slave, but like I feel like she's not going to be using this money because she's just going to be with me doing stuff. Yes. So in my mind, I would be making like a gold donation to her family. No, yeah, you can you can buy her from her family, but this means that she is not a hireling. Yeah. You are responsible. Like, you can't just end your contract with her. She is exactly. completely and fully dependent upon you. I'll do that. Okay. I'll give him 10 gold? No. How much that's do not, you want? That's, um, I, I need to take a look at some numbers right here because straight up purchasing it, people like this. It would have to be, like... If she's working, like if she's working for a farmer's family, they're going to miss out on like a few years worth of labor. You know what I mean? That's a lot of money yeah. on a farm. Yeah. You're talking at least a hundred gold probably to buy a person out. But keep in mind, now I'm talking back in the day, <clears throat> it is a girl. So their probably plan was to marry her off and get a dowry. Um, this that was back probably in the their day in a fake world. So I don't know if the rules of medieval Europe apply here. Well, gravity yeah, still exists, so... We're a little so. bit, more, <laughs> a little bit uh, more gender neutral with uh, uh, gender roles. There you go, good. Yeah. Um, In a better world. So I think what we're going to be doing is she's 15 years old. We're going to be purchasing um, the next five years of her labor, but you're going to be getting a slight discount because you're paying all of this up front. So you're she's gonna be a hundred and twenty gold to her family. A hundred and twenty gold for her? That's yeah. Okay, then I'm just gonna have to pay, then gonna I'm just gonna have to pay her monthly because I don't have hundred and twenty gold right now. I have hundred and twenty okay. gold. Can he set up? You want to buy? You're gonna buy her? <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I set up a fucking payment plan? Jesus, it looks crazy. I can give you. Yeah, the, well, I, this is that's a lot of labor, dude. This is years yeah. and years and years of labor. I can give you that money. All right, give it to me. I will let I'll you buy. You I will pay you to buy this child. All right, I'll buy this kid. 120 done. But here's the thing: like, she is like not a hireling anymore. She is no. dependent upon us for food, labor, and will develop as a character with us now. Yes. Yes. She's what if item. she? What if she wants to leave? She can't. She's a high owner. She's indentured, <laughs> right? Basically, be like Mr. Mooton is now her family. Basically, yeah. yes. She's yes. not going to want to leave anyways. I'm going to treat her very nice. I'm going to teach her about being a knight, and we're going to go back. We're going to take my homeland, and she's going to be my number two. She's going to have her head cut off by an ogre in like two, maybe three sessions. But what no, she's in the meantime, gonna she's going to have similar monthly upkeep costs as you, right? It, you could, you could, you're Fine. living a poor lifestyle at 10 GP a month. You could say that she's living a squalid if you want at 3 GP a month, or you could treat her as an equal at 10. Yeah. Now, she's a kid, so. She's living a squalid lifestyle because she's got to learn. We feed discipline, her scraps. Okay? We feed her the yeah. scraps. She's well, learning discipline right now. She Ren chews on the bones. If this is the, the, the direction you're going to go, Ren is actually going to argue with you, and he's going to be okay, like, no. Fine. That's a growing kid. If she has to grow to her full potential, she needs to be fed full meals every single day. You can't just, this is, you can't just buy a puppy on, you know, Nadinus's birthday because it's all fashionable and then throw it out <laughs> by a stairs, you know, bar mitzvah. You gotta fucking keep that shit for life. You're right, Ren. Always right. <clears throat> if you I don't will, feed her, you... she won't develop into the warrior you needed to be. Growl is uh, <clears throat> taking all this in. And uh, he's gonna he's gonna take August aside. Is so like, is she like your pet? No, she's gonna be like my second hand. Um, and I'll explain to Growl like, you know, a knight is someone who <clears throat> tries to uphold their code. And I'll read you my code that I read earlier. This is someone who I want to teach. I'm trying to create a lineage. Um, my whole family line was killed, you know? So I'm trying to remake that again. Does that make sense, Grau? <clears throat> and she she wants to be taught this? Y yeah, genuinely. Then, I wouldn't take someone who didn't want to be. Then why did you have to spend 120 gold? Because her parents just... are going to be missing out on her labor. Does that make sense? Uh, oh. Technically, her parents own her right now. 
and they use oh. her to labor the farm. So she was her parents' pet. <laughs> and now she's, and now she's our pet. Now she's our friend. Mm-hmm. What if she doesn't want to be your friend anymore? Where'd he go? Okay. What? What? Just like you, Growl. You ever don't want to be our friends? You're free to go. Yeah, but you didn't have to pay Autumn to hang out with me. But Autumn wasn't using you as labor. And Autumn didn't birth you. At least we think. I hope so. <laughs> I don't know who birthed. I hope nobody birthed me, honestly. Someone Sounds had to horrible. shoot you out of their hoo-ha. <laughs> Don't. That, that is the technical way. <laughs> I don't. I don't like that thought. But okay. I mean, what if she sees me turn into a bear? Is she gonna run and tell everyone? Uh, let me talk to her about it before we do it. Um, I'll get the gauge. I won't expose your secret. That's your secret to tell. Um, mm -hmm. but I will explain to her about. We have magic users in the party, and everybody here is friends. Um, we're all looking for the best interest of one another, and I'll tell her about who you are. Uh, <clears throat> but not your secret. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You're a very kind person. And that's mm -hmm. what I'll share. Okay. When you feel comfortable with telling her that you are not human, and you're a bear or an orc or whatever, um, then that's That'll be the time that you share. But I will tell you if I think that you should share. Okay. Is she going to sleep while we sleep? She will sleep in her camp, yeah. She'll probably sleep in my tent if I have one. Red flock. We should make sure that I have a place to sleep in the camp where nobody can see me and nobody can randomly come in. <clears throat> I agree. You can sleep with uh, in my tent if you want, Grah. Oh, welcome. I'm I assuming you're there. there in the <laughs> teleportation. Well, wait, is this not is this not the, maybe the same night that we were at the tavern with the two new guys having this conversation? That's what I was assuming, but maybe I'm wrong. I thought you were away. Yeah, okay. he, I, thought I thought you were away. away. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm gone. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's find let's find some sort of solution where I can sleep on my own somewhere, and maybe I'll feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Isn't it exciting um, that you have started saving money with Autumn for your feeder? Yeah. It'll be awesome. Yeah, the troll. <laughs> so exciting. One thing I want to bring up, Neil, is I'm going to try my best um, to feed both me and the and Stacy the same amount. But if it ever comes to it, I will take the hit. So awesome. if I ever have to live a squalid lifestyle, I will. Um, but Stacy's going to get like the good treatment as Ren was oh, saying. Okay. So she's getting the, the poor <clears throat> life tri style, not the squalid lifestyle. Perfect. Correct. Um, just to do a quick overview, we've got four player characters. Um, we've got a squire. We've got two laborers, a light war horse, and two dogs. Correct. Is there anything else that oh we need? God. There might have been some talks about like a donkey and a cart. Is that like for later? I think we're... That's out of our reach right now, unfortunately. It's out of our also, reach financially. And I don't think any of these people are going to be fighting, by the way. Like, no. the two dudes are just after our cart, and the Stacys are going to watch my horse. We're not using them in battle right now. Good. Um, just a heads up. Yeah, because they're they're not fighters. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, believe it or not, it comes out to a monthly cost of 69 GP for the party <laughs> to survive. Everyone's expenses nice. all told 69 GP a month. So as long as you can make that, we're good. Plan. Uh, we get to work. <laughs> is Grau's not contributing any money to this. He's not getting anything. Grau doesn't know how much money he has half the time, so <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. Well, most of him, most of his money's with Autumn, right? Yep. Yeah, most of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. I was right. I don't want to pay either. I don't have any mountain servants. How much well, the, is my How much is my share of the the maintenance, Neil? Ten GP. Thank the you. laborers okay. are for the Just camp. That. Yeah, that's they are that's to true. Listen, carry things for us. So, like, let's say, oh, we have to get into combat. Drop my backpack. Laborer scoops up the backpack and runs off into the woods with it. Okay, you're gonna have to explain Growl why mm. he has to go to Autumn and get his hard-earned gold. <laughs> 
that he wants for his trough um, and spend it on some shit that he doesn't <laughs> no, you need. Don't have to spend. you don't have to get that now. We're fine. We're fine right now. Um, yeah, we're good. We will uh, make money. We're okay. Nick, Nick, if you will give you money to buy this woman, but he won't give you money to upkeep her. Yeah, it's really well. Yeah, it's cringe. I, Stop trying yeah. to break up the party, Nick. Nick, Nick, no, the Nick fucking you, can buy, you can have the dog, but you're feeding it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm not gonna be the one to walk the dog. I'm not taking day, care okay? of that dog. I'm not walking the squire. You've already got me taking these two idiots off on a little adventure for you while you guys dick around. You wanted the them to. <laughs> I don't. You think, asked I thought, them to go with were, you. Yeah, but then I realized but, but at the gate that they want couldn't to cover fight. Their expenses. They can't fight. Wow. So I'm at the gate thinking, well, what, what is the point of you guys? I might bring them along anyway, just to a nice guy. You we're, know? We're, we're they going carry to your shit them into fights. Yeah, well, they're yeah. carrying. Nick, remember you were being like, oh, you do this, you do that, you do that. Yeah, yeah. Those are the guys you can tell. These are the guys. That. That's who it was. Yeah, no, sure, fine. All right, so we it's got just you so some you fucking workers. So you can rest. I will say that. Then if you're too lazy to do the work, you need to hire two guys to do the work for you. That's fine. Well, I will say about Rudy and Melvin, I would like to develop them into something at some point. Yeah. Well, right now, they're mm -hmm. just like camp followers, and if they're, they have interesting personalities and they mesh with the party, we'll see where they go. Great. Great. Well, it's been a shit. <laughs> Let's deal with these bridges when we get to them. Um... I'm going to just assume that in the, the downtime, you've made enough money to cover this month's expenses, including all these people, and we're not going to touch your actual currency right now. Um, okay. That breaks the party apart. <laughs> can, I, uh, can I roll my spell checks? Yeah, are you learning spells off the wall? I'm learning one spell off the wall and one spell off my stolen spell book. Excellent. Okay. Yes. Reclaimed spell book. Reclaimed. Um... Uh, yes, I reclaimed it. Where My is dreams. excellent? All right. Uh, hey. not Malachi, but the other one. What's his name? Arrakis. Arrakis. There it's we go. Neil, it's totally different. Neil, please. They're completely unrelated. It's I don't totally, know why. Totally different. I don't know why even you would say that. They've got like no. <laughs> you know, it's, not it's been like five years, but yeah. I still think of you as Malachi. No, well, that's fine, but. Hmm. You know, different spells, Neil. I don't think detect magic, sleep. Might be the only crossovers. Okay. Well, yeah. tell us what you're rolling and what it's for. <clears throat> so the first spell from Thalius's spell book is Alter Self, which is a weak spell. To be honest, I've never taken it before because the duration is short. It's a matter of minutes rather than hours. It's really only good for like sneaking past a guard, maybe like getting into a city that you're barred from, or sneaking into a tavern by pretending to be someone like rich and fancy or something like that. Um, but it could have uses, so I'm going to try for Alter Self. That's in Thalys' spellbook. What's your percent chance? Well, this is not... Neither of these are shadow spells, and so I'm taking a minus 15 on this. Mm. So the chances are, I think, 50%. Let me just check. Oh, yeah, 50%. So it's 50-50. 50-50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want high or low? Um, but in a way, it's always 50 50, isn't it? It's, you you get it it's always 50 50. You get it all you yeah. So we're going to go for low on this one. We need low rather than high. Okay. That's a pass. Again, Excellent. Alter self. Great. So we'll add that one to the spell book. And then the second one, this is where we go on the little trip with the two guys collecting some ingredients for the shop, the spell components, and such. To get to the tomb, I feel like the need to make the point that I will kind of tell them what to expect when we're going into that. I'm obviously, they know what's in the swamp, but. We're going to this tomb, and then it's you know, its not like things that they've seen before. <laughs> Way before you go. Don't you need four strong men to open the door? Oh my god, wait, yes, I do <laughs> need four strong men. He turns around. <laughs> Fuck. I think I probably didn't realize that halfway to the... Yep. <laughs> Fuck. I think I find, like, a strong kid, Neil, and I'll pay him to come with me. Wow. It's only to, it's only to open it. Right, not to, not to close it, uh, not to. You can, I can get back yeah, out. Why don't, why don't you shell out like three silver to hire someone in Wickish to come all the way to the swamp and do this for you? You're really gonna, sh you're insane. You're gonna show a random kid that they can open this area with magic. That's a good point. Maybe in fact I will. Okay, we don't. Maybe we don't need to role play. The smart thing to do is to go back to the the son or the, the nephew or whatever of Sigris and ask him if he's seen this part before. Maybe he's a better person to come with. 
Sigrus's great 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 grandson. That's who you're going for? Yeah, I'm trying to make my card sheets fucking around. Um... Did have his name? I do have his name written down. Though. His name is uh, Alice Shadowhunt. And Wickish. Yeah. Name though. As well, I could also blindfold the kid and just have him push open the wall and then leave. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be telling that story. He took me out into the forest and we went down yeah. into somewhere weird. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, you're still yeah. gonna have to pay out three silver to hire someone no, to it's fine. I, go I already, on this crazy I already, plan. I already played. I'll Excellent. ask if Hollis will do it. I'll get. I'll tell him. Uh, Thalos is an old man right now, and he, ha you know, everyone always wants to come to him about his great-great-great-grandfather or whatever, and he gets a little tired of it, and he d he doesn't want to get killed over this shit. He's seen too many people die. He wants to keep some distance. Um, I don't know. Do I just give up and waste a month of time, or do I just get some random to... Blindfold a kid. That would be yeah, I, I, I blindfold a kid. I bring Great, them. Done. I bring them to the tomb. To I blindfold them. I have them push it open, and then I send them back out whilst I go in. Perfect. I'll put the spell down. Yeah, I hope that's fine. Are you going to shut the door? <clears throat> does it not? Sure, it's massively behind me. No, that's not an automatic door. So how does it close? Or strong men push it closed. Okay, I thought he just asked you that a minute ago. And yeah, I thought you can shut it. I'm like 90% sure that he asked you, and I thought it sounded like you can shred it with like one person or whatever. Um, um, well, then I'll have, to go and get, I'll have to go and get someone and come back and right. do the same you leave thing him again. Up. Perfect. Excellent. Just chuck out another three silver and it's fine. We're done. <laughs> we can move on. Okay. Easy. Um, Great. It's well, fine. The, well, it's not. I've not rolled a spell yet. The next spell oh, right. is Ray of Enfeeblement, which will reduce somebody's strength to like five. Great. And you want higher low on this? Low on this one as well, I think. Yes. Another perfect success. Oh. oh. We don't Nick, see that every day. the hits are coming. We don't see that every day. Was there a third spell you wanted to learn? No, that's it. I know when to cut my luck. Okay, and this was Alter Self and Raven Fueblement? Yeah. I will add them to your character sheet. Oh, I'm doing it. You're all right. Ah, oh, perfect. Lovely. All right, the party can gather back together in Swampside. It's been months since our last adventure. Uh, Growl, you didn't have anything you wanted to do in the downtime, did you? Uh, nope, Growl will just be hanging out. Sometimes he'll be roaming the forest for days, just walking around in bear form, looking at the trees, watching them grow, using some spells just randomly, just because he can feels lost. He doesn't know what to do. If anything, mm. he probably spends some time talking to Nadinus. Mm. Um, in fact, I think he will pray to her every night and try to have a conversation and just kind of figure out what the fuck happened and why he was sent to Autumn find out about himself what was up with the mm. mules you know it's it's on his mm. mind yeah the gods will work in mysterious ways and i think why don't you give me a wisdom check for your efforts of communement communing communion communion yeah ooh that's pretty good so what you will get is this like vague connection like um like you're looking through a window and the gods on the other side of the window except the window is sort of frosted and right now it's really frosted so you can see the light coming through and you can see like a little bit of color and a little bit of shape but the detail is all lost to you it's like and to make to make sense. it to make a more wildlife analogy maybe it's like a frozen lake and there's almost like there's fish underneath or something maybe salmon That's better but, yeah, but the lake froze when there was like a lot of air bubbles, and so it's just kind of hard to see what's happening underneath the ice right now. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. your your period of a few months here must be met with a certain amount of frustration over not quite being able to connect, like being able to see the thing that you want, but not being able to reach it tantalizingly close and yet completely out of range. Yeah. Um, I think this is a 
pretty not great time for Grau. I think he's going to isolate a little bit. He's not really going to go into town. Like, he's never hanging out alone, right? Um, if he goes into town. If he's alone, he'll be in the forest. He doesn't really feel confident in going, like, and just talking to people. Um, he's lost a lot of that. Um, but he's also, like, if anything, he's probably feeling more connected to the woods again. Maybe he'll even sometimes just go hunting for raw meat. They'll catch a rabbit and they'll bite into it and be like, this isn't a fucking meat pie. So he's not mm. he's not satisfied with that. Um, but he doesn't really go on, want to go into town and get the meat pies because he kind of doesn't really want to see humans right now. He's, um, I think he's a little bit depressed. <sighs> yeah. You sought answers. You thought they were going to be coming. And then when it was all said and done, here you were with no new answers. Yep. If anything, um, one thing he will do a lot is talk to the animals in the forest with his magic, but that also frustrates him a lot because he tries to have a conversation like he would with a human, but it's all just... They, they still got animal brains and he doesn't. Ah, <sighs> Grau. Why you gotta be so heavy? Mm. It's winter time's approaching. Um, so the party will get together in the town. Some impetus will bring everyone together. Growl wandering back in town to have a conversation with people, maybe, or maybe mm. one too many squirrels that don't taste good enough. You know, that they need some pepper and some salt in there. Um, and we'll find the party all gathered together. All 10 of you now? How many? There's a bunch of you. Um, all of you together. And it's while we're hanging out and you're all together in this tavern that you are going to get approached. But before we get approached, I just want to get the, I want a little vibe check going on in this tavern. Um, your, your hirelings, your, your minions, do they sit at the same table or do the minions get their table of their own? I think August and Ren sit with the minions. And I think I sense that Grau's not really too comfortable with the minions. So I think me and him will sit at a, because, you know, the pub's not likely to have a table for 10 anyway. It's not so I think mm -hmm. they're on the big table. And we're, we're just, you know, near them. It'd be a table for, for seven, you know? Yeah. Seven, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, we sit separately. So two bit. tables. Yeah. Growl and and the wizard, the, the fighter, the ro rogue, and the three hirelings. Everyone's sitting and having a nice time. Um, Growl, this is the first time we've talked to, to real people in a little while. What are you saying to um, Sigris? I'm sorry, Arrakis. Um, he's kind of he's kind of just sitting there, staring off into the distance. He's not going to say anything. <clears throat> he's just sitting there in human form, looking at the wall, maybe looking out the window at the trees. After a while, I think Arrakis will say, um. You know, Grau, um, where August and Ren come from, it's a different world to here. You know, uh, you know the castle with the king and the queen in Aylbrook? Mm-hmm. That's like, that's where they're from. They're lords, you know. They're comfortable with the idea of bossing little people around, you know. They don't really feel the same unless they've got a few minions below them to, uh, wander around and exploit, you know, they're... They don't want to get their hands there to themselves. So it's uncomfortable for us because I know, you know, you're like me. Slow to trust. You know, I appreciate a friend when I've got one. And I cheers my link my glass against his as, as I say that. Um, but they don't see it the same way. Bro looks down at the herbal tea that he ordered for himself. Because that's his thing now. <laughs> <laughs> I say, you know, no wonder you're bored. You should get some beer. Well, isn't commanding people around, structuring yourself, being underneath someone or above someone, isn't that what makes you human? <clears throat> if I want to be human, maybe it's that what I have to do, to structure, to order, one is above, one is below. In the forests, the only thing that matters is if you have claws or not, but here you have land. You have wheat, you have money, you look good, 
everything is a complicated tier. Maybe that's what separates you, and maybe that's the gift that I was given, is to order myself within this. Maybe I need to have people beneath me as well, so I can become more like you. The stair is only one part of the pantheon. Order is only one half. Chaos is the other half. It's true that the lords and the ladies, they like their hierarchies and their social standings because it gives them power, but there's a different kind of power out there in the world. Um, there's chaos, and Malchus is the god of humans, and don't let the order of the lands and the kingdoms confuse you. Chaos is what makes humans strong. And Nadinus, the forest, the woods, that's a place ruled by chaos. There's a room for us out here. We don't have to uh, conform to their hierarchies to succeed. Maybe I just need to distract myself. Mm. And it's on this note of needing distraction that the door to the tavern will open and a gentleman will look around. He's got plate mail on, so clearly he's somebody. Um, but he doesn't carry a sword at his side or a spear or even a dagger. Um, His armor has this like purple tint to it. Maybe it's been like lacquered or painted or some kind of not actually like purple metal itself. Um, And his gaze will go across the tavern and then finally rest on Ren, Renatus Fur. And he'll make his way across the tavern to Renatus Fur and come stand before you next to your hirelings, and uh, your your squire, who now has their own squire. Standing before you, this man will say, are you Renatus Fur? Um, I'm mid-sip of my drink as he comes over, and I sort of finish it and put it down on the table before I raise my gaze to him. I say, that is my name. Who is looking for me? I am Theo. Pleasure to meet you, Theo. You have a second name? I do not. I work for Magistrate Zara. Hmm. How is Zara? I haven't heard from her in a while. He squints at your familiarity. You know, you can see this guy's got like a stick up his ass the, the size of my arm. And the the casual, like, oh, how's she going? I haven't talked to her. He just like, you know, stiffens at it, frustrated. Mm. There is a job for you. Magistrate said you and your team would be well suited for this and that I should seek you out while I was here looking for minions. Minions? Are you interested? Ah, well, in work. I Well, I am personally very interested in work, but I do have to filter that through my party and find out if they at all like the taste of this work. Um, I, unfortunately, am not a dictator. I cannot command my, my friends to go where I want them to, but um, we are interested. Uh, and if we are not heading that way, we will send a message. What's the job? Well, wait, can you tell us? I thought, wait, I thought you were saying we had to go to know. Um, I, no. I like empty out my ear. It's like, I think my hearing's going. There is a conference being held in Valebrook or the Central Kingdoms from here to the fjords of the north. A great many um, diplomats, agents, ambassadors, and that sort will be making their way here, the disparate region in order to meet and discuss. My eyes glaze over at the thought of all that wealth in one city. Just like (laughs) picking those pockets and getting all that money. And you can kind of see, you ever talk to somebody who's zoned out and you can tell Ren has just zoned out thinking about that money. Mm -hmm. Ren, we can answer the questions about our homeland. Mm. On the way here 
from the, the north. Money. Oh, man. <clears throat> there is a passage through the swamp from the town of Papari to the town of Keygate that our ambassadors and princes and whatnot must pass through. It would not do for any of our guests to be inconvenienced or assaulted or attacked by monsters. And so we are making sure the path will remain open. Magistrate Zara says you have personal experience with the swamp. I and do. as such, I would like to finger you for the middle position of the swamp. Very well. Um, when you is have this happening? Sufficient manpower to keep the middle section open? Well, we have sufficient manpower to guide people through the middle section. Keeping it open mm. were enemies of the kingdom interested in doing damage might be a little bit more difficult. I don't actually know how many resources the fireflies have. We will have. have... He pauses when you say that. Mm. That is a separate issue, yes. I mean, presumably this is known quite widely that this is happening. Uh, were I, you know, an angry tree people who wanted to upset the empire that narrow passage is exactly where i would strike leave the fireflies to me all right i will need you and however many strong men you command to hold the middle section we'll have men in papari some in keygate some stationed inward a little bit. Our guests must not be harassed on their way through the swamp. If you can do the job as the magistrate suggests that you might, you will be well paid for your services. I think we can do this. Um, how long are you in town? I am here another two days. Today is um, August 2nd. Right, give me give me a day or two. Uh, where can I find you? He gives you the name of the house that he's staying in. He's staying with one of the um, local family noble members. Guys. The, yeah, local nobles here. They put Perfect. him up whenever he comes to town. Their names are a uh, standard family. Yeah, I will. I, I will make. <laughs> I will make. Uh, I, will, I will discuss this with my party, and we will make plans and preparations, and we will inform you uh, within the next day or two about whether or not we're able to take on this job. How much does this job pay? Good night? It pays The crossing well. should take no more than a week for all the assembled peoples. We will only need a week of your time. Magistrate Zara has offer um, has authorized me to spend 35 gold on the middle passage for that time do you know if people from uh, castle valenscar will be attending in the vantis that kingdom? is north of here between us and the fjords one of their ambassadors will inevitably be arriving at least kind of like kick uh, ran under the table. What do you know about Castle Valenscar? Shrug. Why are you a interested? There. Uh, old, uh, an old lover. Are they an ambassador? Sadly, do I don't they think work so. for an ambassador or a prince? I shrug. She was just a common lady. Maybe I could send the ambassador a message back. I give him like a you are not to talk smile. with the ambassadors or the travelers. Your job is as guards against monsters in a narrow region of the swamp. Do mm. not make the mistake of being familiar with these people. This is an important meeting, and they are not to be disturbed. W one moment, sir. Did Glowers you say hours with like you know frustration? He seems did... very unhappy. Mm -hmm. Did you say thirty-five gold for a week's work? For the whole That's of us? five gold a day for your team. Is that insufficient? Do you not command? Um, do, do, do the men you command require more? 
We spend twice that in maintenance. I think 70 gold for the week would be a good deal. What do you say? We can do uh, Magistrate a favor, right, Ren? I think so. I kind of lean back in my chair. We have done far less dangerous work for far more pay. Um, but I think... 70 days then. Yeah, perfect. Accepted. Um, I, I we will give you a full well confirmation. Negotiated. We'll give you a full confirmation in the next uh, day. So be it. Good day. And he will mm -hmm. head out. Never having asked August's name or the name of the other people working with you, sticking yeah. just to the one man in charge, and also <laughs> being like unreasonably prickly about everything. Like he came here disliking you from the get-go without yeah. even having met you. Superior. I don't like him. It's an asshole, right? Mm, he's a schemer. Is that how all nobles act, Ren? Is that how we acted? No, that's how... That's how the schemers act. The ones who like to make trouble. Write that down, Stacy. Don't act cold. Read everyone as your equal. Yes. And then, like, nod as in, like, yeah, it's good. Ren, Ren will lean look over at to Stacy and say, you must have known. Depending on who you're talking to, you should be cold or you should be warm. But the first time you meet someone, you should be reciprocal, polite and friendly and based on how they interact with you, you respond hmm what did you okay. say, Grau? I can do that he didn't even look at me once he must have known that I'm not a human but a mere lowly animal a guy in the armor? no, he's just a uh, so nice. don't worry about him I'll well, call, uh, I'll call them over. Bro. Uh, Arrakis, come here. I want to tell you uh, what that guy said. Yes, go, go on. What did he, it seemed like he had a job for us or something. Yeah, well, Ren here negotiated a higher fee. Genius. Fantastic. Uh, we're going to be, if we all agree and we're all interested, watching uh, the Middle Pass in this area. The Maw. In the Maw. Um, 70, 70 gold for the week. To what end? So for what for, reason? For money and for uh, no, magistrate I mean, Zara. What? Why? There's going to be want... a there's going to be a big meeting of all of the fancy pants uh, nobles uh, emissaries from all regions of Solemn. Uh, I don't know about that. Sounds kind of. Neil, when uh, the town that I fled from, that's with that where they coming? You don't know. If if mm. it's from all of Solemn, then somebody from that town would be coming. But would it be the people that know you? That doesn't seem likely. They wouldn't be on the lookout for me, you know. Probably not yeah. here. Not in the heart of the empire. They wouldn't be looking for you here. Surely. For uh, how long, August? How long must we guard the more? Just a week. A week? I... Camping out in the swamp? Yeah. Fine. We've done that tons of times. Dangerous I really, there. I really need this. Uh, Rackus. The sure emissary from my homeland is going to be coming, coming through. Oh. I need to know what happened. Oh, right. Yeah. You mean what caused the curse? Go. I need to know if anyone's okay. I need to know if I need to go back. What happened to my... Family? Didn't Zara say? I thought we spoke about that. Uh, the said they were all... lifted. That means they're all gone, right? A shrug. At least knowing what happened would be nice. You the know that inside. land is all mine, right? Yeah, I'm sure whoever's in charge sees it just like that. They find out you're still alive. They'll probably be coming for you, sending assassins. Make sure that you don't have a claim. They're in need charge, to right? Yeah. But the people have their hearts guaranteed. My family were always good to the people. Perhaps, but uh, any ambassador coming to swear fealty or to have this discussion is going to be in cahoots with whoever's in charge there now. So be wise. 
August. None. Keep your information close to your chest. Maybe Ren can talk to them. He knows all the information and he doesn't look the same. Speaking of looking the same, Ren, remind us about your appearance. You, like Renat, not like a, like August, were cursed. But what does this curse do? Did it aid you or did it just like strip you of your abilities? What do we know about this curse and how it's affected you? Um, we know that Ren... It depends on how much I should reveal, is really the question mm. for the suspense of the viewers. Um, but Ren is not meant to be this old. Um, Ren is meant to be a little bit younger. Um, how, how old is August? Um, I'm 21 now. Yeah, Ren, Ren would be like in the region of like actually 45, but I think he's like what, mid, like early 60s or something? Early Whatever. 60s, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he's been like. He's been aged out of, like, his middle age, you know, like, um, mm-hmm. which means his strength is lower. His his physical capabilities are lower. And he also lost access to his entire life's training as a warrior. So he can't fight anymore the way he used to um, at all. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. The only thing that Can he you... retains is, I think, the army sword. And your curse, at least it was told to you, was very similar to the one that August got, that your the state would happen until you were the last of your line. Does does Ren know if he has any family, any kids, any, any relations back home? Ren doesn't know anything uh, about what happened after he left. The only thing he knows is that he was ousted from his position um, when the Empire came and cursed as a punishment for something he did. Mm. Were you married? Ren was married. Ren was married and he had one son who died um, roughly around the time that actually August would have been born. And so Ren kind of took August in as his own adopted son because his father... Um, August's actual father was so busy running the actual kingdom Mm -hmm. and didn't have as much time whereas Ren was like a household warrior a famous warrior so on and so forth and he kind of trained up August and so in theory Ren shouldn't have any offspring he should be the last of his line already right yes so either she has gotten the way the curse is lifted wrong or Mm. um, or there is someone or something out there that is still related to Ren how did your son, did you say it was a son? How did your son die? Is this uh, like mystical, magical illness or like, you know, regular form of death? It was a pretty straightforward death, actually. Um, he was, what was that? Uh, I would have been, what, I would have been 25 when Ren was born. So my son probably would have been in the region of like six to seven, right? Sort of mm-hmm. in that age, he would have had children young. Um and you know nobles they got nothing better to do than to pop Mm -hmm. out kids and um he died in a um he was learning to ride a horse and the the horse went rogue it was kind of no only really the trainers were there and they ended up getting into trouble and um with some training accident to do with horses actually that's a pretty normal death nothing mystical or magical about that trainers get executed after Ooh. That Did you is... do anything to him? I think Ren, in his grief, lashed out at the trainers. And also, back then, Ren was a different guy because he has been humbled by his... Um, well, he's been humbled by his humbling, right? He used to be a lot more hot-headed. He used to be a lot more violent, in particular. Um, the household that we belonged to favored um, like the concept of face and beauty and, like, To give my son an ugly death through negligence was like, Mm. he probably personally executed those stable boys. It was a pretty brutal place you came from. All right, last couple of questions here. Last of your line is a pretty vague curse, right? That could mean you've got a brother who's got a kid or, you know, siblings or something like that. 
Um, but it could also mean that you have a child from a previous encounter that you're unaware of. Did Ren ever step out on his wife? Ren used to drink a lot. And he lived like what was considered to be a sort of warrior's life, right? He was violent and he had dalliances with beautiful women, uh, potentially even beautiful men. I haven't really explored what his sexuality mm -hmm. is. Um, did he ever step on his wife? That's a hard question to answer. I'm going to say no, because he did take the vows that he did as a warrior seriously, but he did have romantic encounters before, like while he was betrothed, but before he was married. Mm hmm. And you said you drink. Is it possible that one of these drinking times you, you might not remember some actions that you took? It's entirely possible that in the course of celebrating from uh, a dueling, jousting, or military victory mm -hmm. of some kind, that Ren got too drunk and doesn't remember what happened. Okay. Unlikely. Because you swore Unlikely. odes and you're an honorable man, but it's not impossible. Absolutely. What about siblings? Who else could be the... If Assuming this is even the right curse, who else out there might fulfill this position? Do you have any brothers so, or sisters? Ren had um, at least August's father as a brother. Was, in my mind, it was just them. But we haven't actually filled out the backstory on how many of them there are. Um, it could have been oh, two you, brothers. You've been referring to him as your uncle, but he's literally your uncle. He's literally my uncle. Yeah. I thought literally. this was a like a brother cousin thing. Literal. No, he's uncle. literally okay. he's literal uncle, and um, he's older than my father. So it was weird that my father was made king. So it's possible that the last of the line might include our dear friend August. It might. You, but it didn't for him, right? Because you're when he got cured and you're still alive, so he's not you're not the last of his line, but it's possible that he's the last of your line. Or maybe that's just, that's not how curses work. Maybe that's not how it's working it depends. Uh, it depends on how the curse works exactly. And that's something we're going to have to figure out when, if we ever delve deep enough into that storyline. Um, but we don't know. Um, also, Perfect. it might also be that the person who told, and this is, this is the most likely scenario in my mind as a player, is that the person who told... Um, Lady Zara, what the curse was, just assumed the curse applied to both of them, and Ren's is actually different. This is like one of the more common theories in my mind. Um, mm. And that actually, he didn't get the full information on Ren's curse. Mm. That doesn't sound entirely unlikely. Someone might have been like, hey, the prince had this curse, and they didn't record the curse conditions for the prince's uncle, and just through the communications... Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's like a very human answer to this problem. Absolutely. Um, and then the other thing is, there might be... <laughs> I mean, I don't want to <laughs> speculate here, but maybe August is a bastard. Maybe that's Ren a... is a bastard. Who knows, right? There's a lot of options. A lot of open doors. Like, hmm. maybe Ren and August aren't related by blood. But Ren's, like, let's say hypothetically, Ren's mom was the queen. She has a dalliance oldest son, okay? That's me. Then she has an actual, like, sort of marriage son with the king. That becomes the younger brother, August's father. Mm -hmm. He gets promoted to kinghood because dad finds out I'm not actually his blood, but he's so concerned with his face, he never reveals that to anyone and just mm. demotes him. Like, there's a lot of ways mm. this could play out, and we actually don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. 
Well, we're going to go to our first break, and when we come back, we're going to see if the party is still on board with this this minor mission to just, you know, hold this pass while other more fancy people do some things, using you as just, like, grunt labor to fight monsters in the most um, crass use of your talents and varied abilities. But we're going to see what the whole party has to say about this when we come back from our break. Peter, that comes. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Save It Eye Outcast. So, party, is this a good deal? Yes. Are you going to take it? Are we going to do this thing? We're going to do it. It's not a good deal. It feels like a setup to get us hooked into some political scheme where we fuck up, cause a diplomatic incident, and then get hunted down. But story progression, so I like so it. I th- I, so I think I'll say something like, well, you know, it's not really much money, and I really like the idea of camping in the swamp for a week, but if we do this, then, Ren... August, this counts as your thing. <laughs> I this start counts- laughing. <laughs> you know, we did my thing in the we did my thing in the tomb. We did Grouse thing with the donkey. This counts as at least one of your things. You're serious? Well, yeah. What does I mean? Seventy gold. What's that? I mean, we just made five hundred gold still in that donkey. Ren is like a gape at him, like us oh, getting offered like a side quest, and he's like, "This is your thing. You've used up your slot." And I'm like. It's all about money with him, with him, isn't it, Ren? I don't know where the fuck we got this wizard. Where did we get this fucking wizard? It, so am, I of, am I out of line here? Sorry, you what is so your fucking line, problem, Arrakis? I'm sorry, do we want to go back so you can read the walls? Oh, 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 the spells are written in the I stone. sat in that tomb oh. for a fucking month, Arrakis, and stood around, and I didn't say a goddamn word. And yes. you're going to... Oh, this is your thing for a week and we get paid? How do I put this a nice way? The thing is, you see, my time... Like... With my intelligence... Say it. I can can achieve a lot. You think you're better than us. Say it. My time is worth more than yours, okay? So you sitting around while I'm studying, that's fair. But if I'm going to sit in a swamp for a week, that's a waste. It's not only a waste for me, it's a waste for, you know, all the people of Swampside and everywhere around here, really, basically. Well, I fine. No, no, you're right. You're right. It's you can just... barely string two magic missiles I... together. Sure. Can you even do magic missile? Can you even? I what is this the most, on the most basic wizard your spell in all oh, my years? Oh, now you're going to criticize my spell card. What do you know about spell casting, Ren? I you know on the ground your feet and I walk away. That could basic spell cast you into the it's ground. A, it's a basic spell. Anyone can cast magic missile. I'm better yeah, than that. Do it right now. Magic no, missile. I'm not. It's below me. It's below me. I'll give you all my money. Do it. It's below me. It's below me. I'm not doing it. It's below me. Guys. Okay. Guys. What's all this fighting even for? What's even the point? In the yeah, end, we're all just question, roaming but... around in this big forest that we call life. Now oh, you've made grow aimlessly. <laughs> See what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me, I'll never be the same again now. Where all looks at his I get on my horse and I... Oh, Sakara, you would do well to learn patience. Out of all of the people in this party, you resist my guidance the most and need it the most it's very wise to be run I'll consider it I'm done talking to you I'm that's we're done for now I you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta seep that one through your your filter I'd assumed when you'd stop talking that you were done but you're still you are still talking now so <laughs> I'm th- this is me talking out of character so I <laughs> ran just sits there as you continue to talk <laughs> Oh, I was talking about character as well. (laughs) Well, (laughs) later that day or the next day, you're going to head over to the standard Uh, family, Ren, and you're going to give your report. You're going to take the job, yeah? um, Well, it's a a sort of quasi-vote. Is everyone in the party in favor of this? Does anyone have... Is anyone saying no to it? We're taking the job. No, we're doing it. Yeah, it sounds good. Right, we're in. I go to the standard family... And I meet this haughty plate man. Ah, oh, yeah. He looks like this, right? He looks like the, the dude I've put on the map. With his, like, lacquered armor and his slicked back hair and his, like, ghastly pale face. I mm. totally lo- There it is. Yeah, yeah I cool. saw that you weren't logged in. Just look cool. Oh. All right. now. Is the quality well, of this them. armor like high quality? Could it be magical? Yeah, plate armor. 
could be loaded with all sorts of magic. <clears throat> but you wouldn't know unless you were able to examine it, and for that, you'd need him to be as still as a corpse. Or I could cast Detect Magic. Or you could cast Detect Magic, that's true. But I'm Detect not Magic stupid. might not, like, maybe he's got the Bless spell on him or, or something else going on. It might obscure the the findings, the readings. See, Arrakis doesn't need, doesn't need to know this, so he's... He's, he's comfortable not knowing, so he's not going to risk casting the second magic. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. Cool. Well, you tell the guy the deal. Yo. He tells you to report to Keygate, and that in Keygate, the, the guy there will explain the rest of the details. Um, and when you're done, just come on back, and uh, you'll you'll get paid, and everything will be fine. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Uh, yeah. Anything we want to say or do before we just head off to the swamp and get involved in some swamp shenanigans? Um, oh, you're given a date for when this is, um, and based on the time frame, you'll have to leave in um, like five days from now to to get to swamp side in time. Yeah, uh, the only thing that I will do is: uh, do shields require a proficiency to use? No, no, they don't. Um, is it possible to you get, get like a... more AC if you do have a shield proficiency? One extra. Is it possible to get like a very, very small shield that you could use? Just like it wouldn't stop you from using your hand, like a like like you know those things archers used, like they had like these little. little arm yeah. Shields. So the rules as written has rules for lots of different types of shields, but we generally don't use them because in order to balance like having a small shield that you can use in your hand the rules the rules balance it by saying you can only use your small shield against one target per round and so now we have to start like changing your ac based on the number of attacks that are and it becomes a mess and so we just said like the common shield is the big heavy shield that weighs a lot but you can use against all number of attackers and gives you good ac so we right. can do the buckler if you want but it's going to just take it's going to be crunchy that's all. Okay, yeah, let's leave the crunchiness. I'm just, what, basically what I'm thinking is for the for the camp guards, they should at least have daggers. And I was thinking if we could get them something very small and easy to protect themselves with, give them like plus one AC so they could... Yeah. If, if well, they, they get could just into grab... a fight to the death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we can get them some daggers, not a problem. Shell out two gold. Four gold? Four gold. And... Um... Yeah. I'll, I'll look into expensive. the shield. We'll, we'll resolve it. Yeah, they're two gold each, I think. Which is an arming sword. I need I'm sorry, they're Stacey. three gold each. You need six gold for that. Six an arming gold. sword. I have a spare. Uh, an you arming sword is Perfect. 30 gold. Nope, we got a spare. I have a spare. Or if I got a nice arming sword off a guy. Yeah, do you I give her that one someone. or do you give her the other one? I give her the old crappy one. I'm keeping the nice one. Okay. Excellent. He's using the one we got off the guy that we rolled like the hundred on, Neil. Okay, this yep. could be a magical one. Yep. Oh, yep. Wait, am I not using the shadow blade? No, no, no. I'm using the shadow blade. I give her the nice one. Excellent. It's the nice one. All um, right. I buy a tent before we go to the swamp. I'm not sleeping out in the open water. So. Yeah, that'd be gross. Fair. Um, upon oh. giving these two guys the dagger, basically, it's a very short conversation. It's like, hey, listen, the dagger might save your life. If combat does happen, your best way to survive is to run. To run, hide, and avoid the fight. You guys aren't fighters. You, I could teach you to be, but this is for in you know, a last ditch situation. If you're in real danger, this is how you're going to protect yourself. Yep, they're on uh, board, uh, and they also don't want to get in um, fights. Right? They're they're not here to fight. So, a dagger just to keep safe if you absolutely need it is great, and staying out of combat is their jam. They do not want to get killed. Mm. These guys so are gonna carry with unarmed. <clears throat> these guys are gonna carry a backpack with all of like our bed rolls, our tents, and stuff like that. So how much for three more tents? One for Grau, one for Ren, one for me and Stacy. Ren likes sleeping outside, and Ren just right. actually hands his backpack to one of those guys and is like, "Here you go," and you never go. carries it ever again. <laughs> Yeah, well, let's just, um, instead of trying to come up with all the list of supplies, why don't we just we say go, you yeah. can outfit them with bed rolls and blankets and all, you know, all the and miscellaneous stuff. crap that you're going to need for, uh, I don't know, someone got 20 gold that they can shell out just for general supplies, ten, uh, tents, torches, bed rolls. That would bankrupt me. Um, yeah. yeah, there you go. 
I make a show. Well, don't we all have bedrolls on us? But yeah, but for your new, you I don't want to get sorry. I shall, I shall have twenty guards to get tents and to get things and stuff to be able to let us camp in the fucking swamp, right? Because that's not easy. Yeah. On a permanent basis. Um, Neil, yeah, I'm deciding my spells. Are we are we going straight to the swamp, or am I going to need travel spells? We're going to need a few days of travel. I hand them my shovel and my torches. Yep. I'm yep. Just you hand them making, shovels and torches. Yes. And uh, perfect. Don't don't. Are you removing them from your character sheet? I did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just one quick question. I would know the flag. Like. If I'm waiting there watching these people past, I would know when the procession from, like, the town that I'm from comes by, right? I'm not going to need yeah. a check for that or something. I'm going to be able to be prepared for that. And find yeah, you've seen that flag a thousand times. If yeah, the okay. either the town that you're from or any of these towns that you spent a lot of time in, you're going to know their flags. And if anything I think is relevant comes up, I'll let you know. Yep. Good. Okay. Oh. All right. We travel on, on the road. I gotta now. deal with this barking dog. Give me just one moment. Yeah, no problem. Kick, just kick it. Just fuck it. Rackus, are you, uh, you ready to stop being a douchebag? What the hell does that mean, August? You're always concerned about money. Okay? You're gonna be a big wizard of my kingdom one day. I need you to stop bitching over oh. little amounts. Oh, sorry of your. Okay. I didn't realize that there was a job in it for me. Thank you. Yeah, you should also probably call me my lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see about that one. Um, yeah, well, I'll tell you what, I'll just write a fucking IOU for the 20 gold for the tents and the bedrolls for all your followers, then, eh? My lord. You can do Ooh, that. Hit him with the my lord again. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that's fine. I will do, yeah. Okay. <laughs> You've appeased my I ego. make a show of writing it down and putting it. Um, putting it away. I'll take. You know what? Here. I'll, I'll scribble on your paper. Here, five percent of my kingdom. You can have that one day. Wow, thank you. I write that on the plus. That's for the tens. Five percent. <laughs> oh, I take, I take, I take into this. I'm like, listen, buddy. Right, if you right, ever right, do get down. a kingdom, five percent is insane. It's fine. He'll be our wizard. Uh, That'll keep him on. Five percent right, of kingdom. <laughs> I, uh, fine. All right. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, tents, torches, bedrolls, shovels, uh, rope, you said? Yep. How much rope did you have? Just so I have uh, a, Just a three new... pounds. So I think 50 feet. 50 feet is silken. Perfect. All right. Excellent. Well, party, we're going to travel. Um, from Swampside all the way to Keygate. Uh, and it's a few days of travel here. So, growl. hundreds? Well, not yet. Growl, this is where this is where it's gonna get real interesting for you because as we talked before, um you don't want to be spotted in bear form with these people. And yet, on the road with these people, they're definitely gonna be camping with you, which means that they might be seeing what's going on with you. How are you gonna manage this situation? We got him his own tent. I mean, Here's the thing. Grau's kind of conceded to his fate right now, and he's he's a leaf in the wind. Um, mm. He's going to go with this. He's probably at some point going to pull the party aside and uh, specifically pull, pull Renatus aside and tell, basically tell him he's going to try his best to avoid being a druid and showing his character, but if they're in battle and he needs to go bear form, them having that knowledge is his problem to deal with. Ren nods and says, perfectly reasonable. Um, I chose young, impressionable people who not yet had hatred for your kind in their hearts, and in time they might be nurtured into being trustworthy members of our squadron. But with caution for now, is wise. I've noticed about humans that specifically the young and impressionable ones like to talk a lot. You're right. What and are we going to do if they tell someone else about the fact that we have a druid? Are you ready to bear that responsibility? 
Uh, Ren's face will harden and darken as he um, as he looks at Grau, and he draws his dagger and kind of holds it, kind of like. The tip is on his palm and he's doing that thing where they kind of like wind it back and forth and he says Absolutely. And then he puts it back. Alright. They're your pets, your responsibility. They're not pets, they're um It's more like we are all a creature and they are our legs. They help us walk. You know, Humans are really good at explaining why the people that are below them, that serve them, are not serving them at all. He turns away from you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I've got my dice over here. One, two. Roads are nice and safe on our way to Keygate. Nice and safe. And we're going to get there. And you'll talk to the guy in Keygate. What was his name? Dude. Wait, which dude? He's the, the captain of the guard in Keygate. Oh. He's an important figure. We haven't talked to him in a little while, but you used to, you used to chat with him from time to time. I remember his name. He was captain cool, Captain Deimos. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Captain Deimos will... He's the guy you're supposed to meet there, and you'll talk to him. You'll let him know that Theo told you to uh, th that you were hired to do the middle section and he'll explain to you what's going on he'll talk to you about the the section of swamp that you're supposed to cover and it's this section of swamp that we've been to countless times before we've used this this little battle because this is the the middle spot this is where there's a nice big dry island that people can camp for a while and your range is you know this island and then a mile in either direction and you're supposed to just patrol that area there's monsters, deal with them, do anything you can to ward off monsters or distract them away. And if and when any of these ambassadors or merchants or, or princes or you know dignitaries come on through, just to keep them free and clear of monsters. Uh, and don't worry about the ambassadors and dignitaries, like they have their own staff to handle that shit. You just, you leave them be and you just keep the monsters at bay. That's your plan. All good? All good, I think, yeah. All good. Sounds good. It's all good, man. Excellent. Um, um, also, we all, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, I set up my tent. I invite Grau to sleep in my tent with me. He would like to stay away from prying eyes at night. I buy a sufficiently large one at the time to accommodate Grau as well. Mm-hmm. Done. You suck him off, why don't you, Arrakis? <laughs> <laughs> I don't say it. Yeah. <laughs> You better not. That's fine. Thank you, Arrakis. I really appreciate it. It's, uh, important that we, you know, don't be too open with our secrets. Nothing to add. All right. These tokens that you see here on the map, in addition to your characters, you can see this map, right? Yeah, yeah, I brought you this map. These are going to be your new people. Uh, going left to right, this is... Uh, Melvin's a woman, so this is the other one. Rudy. This is Rudy right here, this little guy with a stick. Um, nice, quiet fellow. Kind of tall, kind of lanky, kind of gawky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this right here is Melvin. She's also kind of poor, um, but she's ambitious, and she's deeply motivated by money, and... And this right here is Stacy. Damn. Uh, and she's got a sword. Um, Stacy's a and... For real, for real. Well, she doesn't quite have this nice of gear or that nice locket or amulet, and certainly not the pistol on her side. Just ignore the pistol at her hip. <laughs> uh, but otherwise... <laughs> she'll look like this that, when you Stacey? spend some more money. You know? We'll get her the pistol, too. <laughs> yeah. It'll be one of those art pieces. Non-functional. Um, and this is going to be our little camp. And since we didn't run into any road encounters, we can just go straight into the swamp times. Um, I'm going to be looking during the week for an ambassador with the symbol of either Vantis, um, my castle's symbol, which was a green rose, um, or like my family sigil, which I think was also a green rose. 
Yeah, because it's your family's sigil and that your yep. family owned the castle and all that stuff. Just checking a couple little notes over here. Vantis. That Vantis is the name of the kingdom, right? Yeah. I was from Castle Valenscar on the outside. Yeah. Well, so Vantis is the name of the capital and the yep. kingdom, and Castle Valenscar is another castle in the area. Where am I? Um, were you, your father was the straight up king? No, he was the Baron of Castle Valenscar. Baron, okay. Baron of Castle Valenscar. Got it. And your family's sigil was the Green Rose. Correct. And that's the, the Green Rose of Valenscar. Yep. We didn't come up with a sigil for Vantis, did we? I might have said it in the past, but I don't remember it offhand. Neither do I. Excellent. Vantis is next to a frozen waterfall. It's uh, built in an area called Frost Falls. So I think it's going to be um, a vertical tricolor that goes gray, blue, gray. Perfect. Your oh, wait, no. There is a, there is a sigil for Vantis. It is a stag with a rose in its mouth. Hmm. All right. Fantastic. Perfect. All right, party. Here we are in the swamp. Now, this is a gross, stinking area, right? It's just kind of dirty and nasty, and there's bullywugs and lizards folks and snakes and spiders and creepy things and frogs that come out of bubbles, uh, pools, and gripple, grapple you with the tongue, and surprising assassins that are halflings that are drowned in the nearby waters. It's dangerous, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a safe place. Oh my so god, how I we... forgot he fucking dunks the halfling like it was a basketball. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That was good. What is our approach to guarding this area? Because you've been given a job, but there's zero oversight. So you could literally just hang out on this island the entire time, or you can spend each and every day walking the two miles, you know, a mile south, and then turn around and go two miles north, and then turn around and go two miles south, and just do do the patrol what is our what's well, our approach they're all coming from one direction right so that's true they're all going to be coming we, across we, this route we go one mile in the direction closer to mm -hmm. where they're coming from and then as people come we maybe want to move back but i think we start the day waiting for people and then until anyone comes we're just like hanging out basically yeah, right i think that's fine yeah. so yeah. Like, we'll wait near just like the chill. front and then we'll like bring them through and then we'll head back yeah if if we have time, Renatus would happily like a couple of miles isn't that very isn't very far, right? Renatus would happily walk the the trail to get familiar with it because he has swamp survival, so he's mm -hmm. more likely to recognize it as something out of line. Yeah, we'll walk it once yeah. or twice and check it out. Excellent. Can you make me a swamp survival check, Renatus? Oh. Uh, yeah, Renatus. Easy. In fact, anyone right. who has swamp survival can make this check. Oh, I'm don't even bother. 20. Nice. Ooh, nice. Renatus fur. You're walking around. You come to these prints in the ground and you gotta pause and take a deep breath because you know this is the footprint. Unmistakable footprint of a small hydra. And it's fresh. <sighs> Which direction? Okay. I like my blood runs cold as I recognize this, and I instinctively reach for the shadow blade, and I'm like, my hand is on its hilt, and I'm breathing, and I'm looking at these tracks, and I tell the general direction it's headed. Absolutely, yeah. Um, at the moment, remember this map is actually slightly twisted, so north is to the right, um, right. but on this map it was headed down, which is to the uh, east. Um, but you can tell, like, you look at this map. You know, there's sections where you could walk on land, but then if you, you could walk back through the water really easily and not leave any markings. So when these tracks were made, the creature was headed to the east. Um, but if it, the tracks are a few hours old, it could have doubled back and come this way. In theory, I don't know if, I don't know if, um, dumb hydras, with the natural 20, I'm just going to tell you more about hydras. 
they're not super smart creatures. They have like regular animal intelligence, like two to four, like the intelligence of a, a bear or um, a dumb dog, you know? So I don't know if they would ever try to do some sneaky, I'm going to leave a track and then go around from behind and wait for someone to plan an ambush nonsense. Um, it probably doesn't matter, but eastward is where the tracks were headed. Yeah, totally. I will get some sticks um, and mark both ends of the trail where it came in and left um, as a way to like just I have a way marker of this is where I spotted the hydra um, and I will actually go off trail avoiding any deep water pools mm-hmm. and I'm not going very far I, I might go like a few feet out just to confirm that I can see any more tracks on like distant islands yeah, well, with that 34, you can see another track on another distant island. And you can make your way out to it if you want. Um, can I vaguely see the direction the tracks went? Yeah, it seems to be turning somewhat towards the south. It's hard to tell if it's like a 90 degree turn or 45 or even like a 25 degree, but you can definitely see like, you know, more of uh, the side of the print and less of the... F- front of the print from your angle okay um it's beginning to turn i'm going to and like when you say fresh you're talking within minutes no uh, i'm talking within the day like it was made earlier today okay um how far am i in in minutes away from my party uh, i think you're within eyesight and shouting range but because it's a swamp it's like actually a two minute walk okay yeah i'll, I'll make a two minute walk to my party, and I will inform them on what I found, and I will let them know, know that there is a hydra to the east, possibly southeast, and that that is where we should direct a lot of our scouting. Sort of keep an eye out for the hydra, because if that thing comes, we're going to have to potentially run. If it's, if it's you know, we, we, I don't know if we can deal with that. Um, mm. and we should make preparations to be able to fight it. And I tell them, I'm going to go and see if I can track it further. Would anyone like to come with me? Track the Hydra? I yeah, suppose I we, could go we need to know you. where it went. I shall go with you. Okay. I could... I'll stay here and wait for more people coming with uh, Growl, probably. Yeah, I... We'll be in yelling range. I could track it down by its scent, but I would have to... You know. Yeah. Let's let's save that for later. For for if it's really necessary. Mm-hmm. Um and I'll uh I'll take a rockets with me. Alright. As we Okay, sorry, Neil, go ahead. I was just gonna say growl. It's becoming more and more apparent that you're you're gonna have to you know pretty soon if this hydra is a threat, if the if the swamp is going to be as dangerous as everyone expects it to be. Sometime in the next few days. Well. That's fine, right? These are your hirelings, right? Your pets? Right. We will cross that fallen over tree over a river when we come to it. Okay. Go ahead, Arrakis. Tell me what you were going to say. Uh, as we're walking to... Like, we leave the party, right? Because we're going to strike the Hydra. I say, that knight that sends us here, what was his name? Theo. Ah, uh, his name is Theo. You think this Theo knew that there was a Hydra here? Are we just being sent to die in this swamp? Um, well, judging on the footsteps, it's, it doesn't look to be a very big Hydra, which means it probably hasn't been spotted in the area very often. Um, yes, but that's like having a race against a horse and saying it's not a very big horse. I mean, he's still going to lose race. A fair point. Um, but a bigger Hydra would be more known about, I feel like. Uh, you raise an interesting question. I think Theo doesn't care what happens to us, which is why he put us on this stretch. Mm. Um, and he's only doing it because Zara asked us. because She knows we have knowledge of the swamp. Um, well, I'm, no, I'm no expert about swamps, but I know enough to know that if there's a Hydra around, you should probably leave, not set up camp for a week. Well, we should inform the other guard patrols. Oh, we're out on the uh, 
there. Well, there. That's true. We should definitely do that. But let's see if we can't see where this thing lives. I have some... I'm not saying I've got magic to be able to kill this thing. But, uh... Maybe I can scare it off. Uh, if our goal is not to encounter it, it's just to find out if it's anywhere nearby. If we encounter it, we we should run. I agree. Um, and I mean fast. <laughs> like me and you, yeah. I mean, depending on, let's try and get a gauge on how big this thing is. You said it's small. Maybe I mean, if it's really small, maybe we can fight it. Maybe uh. Well, I mean, it's like you said, it's a, it small, a small horse is still a big animal. Yeah, sure. But maybe it's really small. I mean, who knows how big Hydra when they're born. Maybe they're only teeny tiny. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I will diligently and carefully follow the tracks that I'd spotted earlier and that I had marked with a couple of sticks that I stuck in the ground. Mm -hmm. All right, well, you've got... You made a 20 on your first check, so I'm going to ask you to make me another survival check, but since the first one was a 20, I'm going to give you advantage on this one. So roll it twice, take the better of the two. Ooh. Ooh. Bad luck. Yeah, you follow these tracks for a little ways until you realize that you've just completed a circle. Like, you wandered off... You followed the tracks, they went around this thing, they went over here, they crossed over this, you lost them for a minute, you picked them up again, and then you kind of find out that you're back at a place you've been earlier and you're looking at the same fallen log that has like a crush mark on it where the Hydra stepped on the log and you've absolutely uh, been here and you've just you've just done a circle. I will say, as I've been walking up and sticking sticks in the ground mm -hmm. as like, like obvious sticks that I have put so that I can remember mm -hmm. okay, this stick is sticking out and- Yeah. Well, then I guess you would come across these sticks instead of the log and be like, well, here we are. Hmm. What does that mean to you? Does it, is it just a bad check and you've lost the trail? Or is the Hydra actually going in circles? Is it laying a trap for you? Um, I will take... If I'm wearing a helmet, I will remove it. And I will ask Arrakis to be extremely quiet while I just try to listen. Hmm... And I slap yeah, down noise. a detect noise. I don't know what that means. What that number uh, you means. You wanted to roll 45 or lower, so you just, yeah. there's just a lot of stuff going on. It's a swamp. There's bugs, Ribbit. there's frogs, there's a little bit of wind happening. Something is splashing in and out of the water. You don't hear a hydra nearby, but you are in an area that's teeming with life like birds squawking, whole flocks of them. As we're quiet looking around, I think to myself, if I was a hydra, what would I eat? Yeah. What would you yeah. tell me, Neil? What would I eat? Other than, you know, humans. Bollywogs, lizard folk, snakes, lizards, fish, birds. It really just depends do, on how much you can get, right? Do I know anything about, like, hydras only wanting to eat live prey? Is that a thing or not? I would put that in the realm of the unknown for you. So I'm, I'm going to assume that we could bait, get some bait for them. So I suggest to Ren, I say, hey, you know what? I do see any bullywogs or lizard men or anything like that. We should probably kill them and keep them. We might be able to use them as like bait. Mm. So, you know, mm. move the hydra away from us. It came down I mean to that that is an option. I think a better option is to just be very quiet and move the delegates quickly. Um, and be very diligent. But I do like that idea. I, I like the idea. Uh, but the hard part is, where do we get the bullywood corpses? Well, if we, I'm just saying if we see any, maybe we should kill them. But, uh, you know, you're from the Keeps, right? You're a lord. I think you know that uh, these ambassadors, these delegations probably not exactly going to be a, a quiet unassuming type I'm imagining horns, bright colours, flags I'm not sure that uh, blending into the shadows here is an option It will be explained to them that there is an extremely dangerous monster and if they take actions that lead to them endangering themselves, um, it's a good point. Though, we might not be, we Sorry, might not on. be able to protect them. 
that there is an extremely dangerous monster in the area and that we are best off avoiding it. And if one of them makes a huff and puff, I will tell him he can walk himself to the, the Veilbrook. There's bound to be a few uh, hungry knights, hungry for glory, in these uh, delegations. Maybe we'll find one hubris and stupid enough to uh, march out against the thing. The thing I'm worried about is, I don't know if Hydra have a territory. Like, perhaps we're in its homeland. Perhaps we're in its home. And as we try to pass through, it'll see us as intruders. Um, well, I mean, this, even if it eats a knight, maybe it won't be satisfied. Well, maybe with a maybe with a knight, we can beat it. But, um, you know, we've been walking up and down this passageway here for a long, a long time now. It must be six months, a year, maybe. Never seen sign of a hydra before. Mm. Well, it's they are point. quite rare. They're very, very rare. I this mean, was its territory. We'd have seen it. That's true. Neil, have Who I ever run into a hydra? I don't think so. Because Grau's territory is the forest up to the edge of the swamp. Yeah. And hydras tend to live deeper in the swamp and maybe go up to the edge. So you're... you're primary residences are, are pretty different. Got it. Right. Um, yeah. Well, we, uh... why don't we take our second break and when we come back, we'll see how this inevitable problem resolves itself. Perfect. Three. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Save or Die Outcast. All is going well for the party. They're in the swamp, exactly where they want to be. They've spotted a scary monster track, which is exactly what they were hoping to find. Who is in this for the money? Who's in this for the connections to Magistrate Zara? Who's actually in this to see if maybe someone you're interested in is coming to town? No one cares about that. We're here for the monster. Put your hand down. We're here for the monsters. We're here for okay. the danger. I'm sorry, right? sir. I'll be good, I swear. <laughs> he whips us on the break. <laughs> <laughs> Signed NDAs. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, party wiping on a Hydra and we get to roll a new campaign. That's going to be fun. Uh, oh, maybe I get to play Melvin. Well, as you get back to the party, explain to them what's going down. You've also got your two dogs with you. And they're hanging by. I just don't want anyone to forget the dogs. Dogs are good boys. Yeah, who's a um, good boy? Who's a good boy, Nacho? Cheeto? Yeah. Stop licking your ass, Cheeto. You get back, and you can explain to the other party members what you've seen, what you've yeah. so, heard, yeah. what you've seen. I'm there brushing my horse. We did a loop around the camp. Saw some sign of it. Didn't see the thing itself. But uh, it's definitely around, or it's been around here recently. Yeah, and it's it's sticking nearby. It's not wandering too far. It seems to be, well, maybe I maybe I lost sight of the tracks, but it seems to be in the area. So we got to be careful. That's right. Yeah, we need to be careful. We need to be ready. So yeah, act at a moment's notice. Constant vigilance. But uh, you know, we do think that whenever we see any of these uh, delegates. I'm gonna to have to inform them of this. Make sure that they understand that they're, uh, you know, what they're walking into. Maybe wasn't we can our... find a noble knight to slay it for us. Wasn't our job to go through here and kill all of the monsters in these people's path? Just our job to make sure that they get through correctly. Absolutely. We can just take them around, and uh, if one of these idiot knights want to go and try and slay a hydra and die to it, I'll be sure to take their plate armor afterwards. Yep. If they do that, you know, <laughs> <clears throat> not my circus, not my monkeys. Leave me out of it. But what kind of boring circuses did you go to that only had monkeys? <laughs> I'm just saying, it's not my circus. They're not my monkeys. They're not my problem. What is a circus? <laughs> we shouldn't tell the bear. <laughs> not everyone <laughs> had circuses like us. Uh, uh, Ren? You know, do you remember the dancing bears? <laughs> oh, uh, I, like, nervously glance at Grau. Uh, yeah! <laughs> Totally. Oh, was exactly. like, it's, coming. it's just a show. Wait, was these other bears that could dance and stuff like like humans? You've met other intelligent bears? Uh, all bears are intelligent, Rao. 
I know. Uh, so what should we do about the Hydra? Well, I think that um, we need to be on the lookout. Grau, have you seen the Hydra? <clears throat> have you smelled it yet? Uh, I can't really smell very good like this. And look at our computers over there. Oh, that's right. Mm. It's okay. We don't need you in that. Anyways, because we have people coming. There's nobles. <clears throat> I'll kind of look down the road. <laughs> Do I see any? <laughs> Please let that be nobles. I pray to see a noble <laughs> coming down the road. <laughs> There's not. <clears throat> it's fine. Uh, Well, Ren, let's set up camp here and wait for them to come. I'm sure the Hydra won't be a bother. Uh, yes, well, we should do double watches. <clears throat> Ren and August, maybe you sh two should tend to the followers here. Maybe me and uh, me and Grau could go and look for the Hydra. You yeah, could, so like but then how would Grau <clears throat> feel about coming back? Smaller. Yeah. He'd be. I look at I'd Barakas. Possibly cold. Probably cold being out in the swamp all the time. Ah, this is this is an annoyance. I say as I like sort of waft my hands in the air and walk away. Hey, I mean at least Ren got some people to lead around, right? It's right, not yes. about leading. It's wow. It's about building something. We're, we're, we're building a organization. Mm -hmm. we're, these people are going to make our lives easier for. A pittance of coin and we're making their lives better because what were they going to do just lift boxes and crates all day no now they get to adventure think about it like this growl when you have your feeder 5,000 these people are going to feed it for you fill it up you would have had to fill it yourself that wouldn't be any fun would it that would have been half the fun actually I was really looking forward to that <laughs> oh well uh... I you know, when I plan stuff, I don't usually plan around humans doing work for me, but I guess that's, you guys know best what's what's needed around here. We will have to work around it. This Hydra Wait. comes, I don't know how long I can stay in this form. Rao, we don't know best. Your input is valuable. You are a full member of this party as far as being a person goes and if you really don't like these guys we can get new ones or we can get rid of them we can get make our lives too. complicated but like Stacy can don't... carry Ren's bag and we trust her right Stacy of course happy to carry bags Stacy does seem cool <laughs> we don't want to make you uncomfortable Rao, and if these two are Killing your vibe, I think that I don't want to speak for Ren, but as go ahead, Ren. We um Stacy doesn't want to kill her vibe. What Stacey's am I? What good. am I saying? What am I? Say? Look, in order to grow as a person, Rao. One of the things we have to do is to learn to give people the power to hurt us. And that requires trust. Y you trust me, I presume. I haven't betrayed you. I haven't done anything to hurt you. But if I wanted to, I could. I wouldn't because I don't want to. But if I wanted to hurt you, I could really hurt you. And that takes trust. And what we're doing right now is we're taking this very, very small circle of trust between us four, and we're starting to push it outwards. And we're making it bigger and bigger. And that is a slow and careful and deliberate process. And I do want you to be comfortable at every step of the way. Oh, my lord! Sir! Yes? <clears throat> Sir! Call Stacy. Yes, yeah, Stacy. She points to the swamp. Um. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. <laughs> and I look. <laughs> yeah, you can see some trees bending and approaching from the east side. 
is to our a small three-headed, three only three-headed, oh, three-headed. hydra. Yeah, it's just a little hydra. Oh, it's gonna be fun. Get fire! Um, we need I think fire. at this moment we should immediately roll initiative because this is all gonna be happening. You know, lots of things are going on. We want to make sure everyone, all the all the time is being managed well. How far away is the hydra? Did we um, say? I think it's like 150 feet away in the swamp. Wait, that can't be right. What's the distance here? Because it's a little bit off the map. No, 150 feet is perfect. Yeah, it's 150 feet. 150 feet. feet. Mm-hmm. That's fine, Neil. Yeah. yeah, initiative would be great if everyone would just roll it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes. Must roll my initiative. I am going to this. Dog will do this. See, Renatus, Grau, Arrakis, Garp, Cheeto, Nacho. Um, I'm going to roll in for the NPCs, but don't worry about them. I will manage them. The whole point of them is that you don't have to manage them in combat. Uh, that is the okay. NP and NPC. That's close. Probably roll my the horse. Neil, the Neil Pass and the Neil Pass Erickson. <clears throat> All right, Renatus, for you are the first to act. I what is your draw... action? I draw my shadow blade, um, and I delay my action instead turning to yell at the people we have to tell them, you will can't outrun it, get us fire. All right. Melvin is the next up, and she is going to scamper back and away, kind of over in this direction where she'll grab the packs that have been set down and immediately start rummaging through them looking for torches, flint, and tinder. Stacy goes to get the warhorse and knowing her job is going to take the warhorse out of danger and back to this area over here. She's a squire, but she's not quite ready to fight a hydra. So she's going to protect the horse and the gear. Wow. Okay, Neil, I'm going to tell you what my character wants to do and then you can tell me how the mechanics of this might work, okay? Love it. Rao wants to cast Entangle in a way where, ideally, two heads of the Hydra are caught by the Entangle, and mm. one is not, so that one can be fought by a melee combatant. Excellent. Entangle is a 40-foot cube, so what you're going to need is to find a spot, find a time when the hydra is like walking through trees and then you could cast entangle and then the trees could come out and grab the next that would be the dream um like there's a bunch of you... like like fern and and bunch of stuff in the swamp that could hold on to this hydra right Right, there's stuff that could grasp at it from, like, the bottom, but you mm. want it to grab the necks, right? The necks are pretty high off the ground. Mm. So you need it to be having, like, grasses or trees or branches or vines or something at neck level for it to grab it. So I'm going to have you roll me a pure luck die to see if there are any trees in the path of the marauding hydra. You want a high on a 1d20. You need at least a 10 to get at least one tree in the way. Uh, it's a natural it's... one. It's completely open swamp between you and the Hydra. I'm so sorry. All right. I mean, in that case, um, where are Melvin and they're fucking Ru- off. Rudy, they're mm-hmm. fucking Just off. Just around the corner. Just around the corner. Here's one. Here's the other. Dax turned to me. This one, not yet. The other one's behind this cliff, getting fire. What are you going to do, Growl? Um, okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Growl's going to turn around. Oh, no! A Hydra! I will run away like the coward that I am! (laughs) Run into this corner. That was smart. 
mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Out of sight of the two dudes. Mm-hmm. And plop into a bear. Hmm? Like so. <sighs> bear. <laughs> um. All right. And remain there for now. Arrakis. Okay. <clears throat> I unclip a small pouch at my waist that I have had closed since I last visited Autumn. I reach in and pull out a finger of a skeleton that Autumn has mm. given to me. <clears throat> and I start moving my left hand around while I'm holding this, this finger in my right hand. I'm uttering arcane words. And as I get towards the end of my spell, sort of green kind of like a... Uh, Almost like fireflies start to raise out of the swamp, coalesce around my right hand holding the finger, which disintegrates into a green dust, and then shoots towards the hydra, engulfing it in sort of like a green glow for a little bit, as I cast scare on it. Mm. Now, I'll put it in chat, Neil. I'm, I want to preempt this and say, I'm casting this anyway, I expect this not to work, but fewer than six hit die, I believe a hydra with three heads should have three hit die. It doesn't get a saving throw because it's not an elf. Or a priest, I feel like it should be scared off by this. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you read the monstrous manual and you read that every a hit, a Hydra has as many hit dice as it does have heads. And this uh, one no. has three heads. Therefore, you, you should have three hit dice. Well, yeah, but I've not read, I've read the monstrous manual in the past, not just now. Ah. Yes, thank you. Yes. So I've, we've, yes. I've come across Hydra before. Yes, yes, that is very traditional way of measuring adult hydras. Um, like I said, unfortunately, I assume it's not going to work. I just said that, but I'm doing it anyway just to make you explain it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I have to check the number of hit dice I gave this creature earlier today. Hey, Neil, can we get some battle music? Do you not hear the spooky music? I some spooky music anything. on. I like the spooky Refresh. Music. Oh, okay, if I, uh, then it's just me not hearing it. My impulse. Yes, there should be spooky music. There should be tense swamp music. Um, now, the wonderful thing about this spell is it can also, if it fails automatically, let you know how many hit dice a creature has. And this one does fail. No saving throws necessary. Mm. The spell fails or the creature fails? The spell fails. The Hydra is not scared off by the spell. Uh, Rudy will take a turn and come on over Steps here back. and help S Melvin gather together torches. <clears throat> Cheeto and Nacho following the orders from Renatus. <laughs> They're gonna die. Uh, Cheeto, Nacho, to me. Uh, prepare to advance. So oh, I have the dogs flanking me. Um, and yeah. Garp. We've um, I'm going to move a little bit over here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to ready an attack for one of the Hydra's heads. With your bow? With my uh, glaive. With I had glaive. rolled in bow on accident, but I got added it. one to my initiative. Got it, got it. That's what was going on. All right, you ready an attack. The Hydra, slow and last will saunter through the swamp in your direction. By the end of its turn, it'll get to a, about here. It's a slow moving creature. You know, you've all seen the swamp thing. movement. Uh, if this were on open flat ground, you could probably outrun it. The swamp though, the Hydra can walk on the swamp floor pretty normally. You all, you know, end up at your hip height which makes it really slow going. So in the swamp, it might be able to outrun you. Um, but on flat, hard ground, you'd easily outpace this sucker. It gets to this point, and its heads are looking around. It's moving slowly. It's examining the situation before it. And its eyes, oh, its eyes, the eyes of one of its heads can see all the way to this juicy, light war horse with 10 hit points. Mm, Not the horse. So good. And You're this an head man. can see a dog that resembles like a plate of delicious chips and cheese. Ah, oh, it's fantastic. And this one can see this delicious dog. And the Hydra 
licks its three collective sets of lips and rolls initiative for the next round. Can I take the movement of my action? Yes. Okay, I'm going to move myself and the dogs over here. Is that okay? Right there? That's fine. Perfect. Arrakis, should I, should I charge it? You want to charge it next round? Rao? Where did he go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold you hold the line. He's Uncharged. always so scared. Okay. Uh, we roll in? Yeah. Yep. Roll um, in. I want to do the same thing, but I want to move a little bit, Neil. Like, I want to move less than 10 feet. Right. You just want to advance forward with your held position. Yeah. I just kind of want to move over to here. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. And what do you want me to roll in that as? Three? Uh, D10 plus three. D10 plus three. Okay. Boibu, Arrakis, Renatus, for the animals. Uh, we, you can just add that in manually there. Buddy. Wait, what do you need me to reroll? Eight. No, you, oh, you're all didn't. good. I just need uh, Growl to roll a die. My apologies. Uh, all yeah. good. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six. All right, Growl, you're the first one up. Everyone, the party is advancing slowly towards the creature who has its eyes set on the animals in your pack. Yeah, I think I want to try to fall in line with the party here. Mm-hmm. Kind of run in. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not really looking forward to... The plan isn't really to charge in, is it? That wasn't the call. Nope. No. I will hold the line with the party. We All need right. fire, I think. I'll move right. over a little bit, and I'll call out, Stacy, get Schnickel Fritz the second out of here. <laughs> she will call back and uh, put her in Where here. Where did that uh, come from? Oh, no. No, she doesn't <laughs> see you. You're good. <laughs> uh, that is Growl. That is Garp. Renatus. I'm w- holding my actions until all of my, so we can move as a unit. All right. Like you're we're holding. To, we'll move on mm-hmm. the slowest guy. Uh, Melvin is going to come out with the torch finally lit, coming up to Arrakis and then pausing and looking around. And there's a bear. But where's the, where's the weird man? It's okay. My magic bear. <laughs> she holds a torch um, near Arrakis and asks I, if he wants it. Yeah, I take it. My left hand. Okay. You have a torch. Uh, and then she will back the fuck off. Rudy will come forward with the torch and similarly be nervous about the bear, but he heard you call out, it's um, it's your magic bear, right? So... <laughs> yeah. Um, scared of the bear, he is going to go all the way around and have a torch, but not know to whom to give the torch. I'll reach for the torch with my spare okay. hand. Excellent. He'll give it to you, and then he's going to back off. Go go with Stacy and find Growl. He always runs from these things. <laughs> All right, Arrakis. NPCs have acted. It's your turn. Good. So I, I take in my surroundings. What time of day are we at here? It's the prevailing light conditions. That is a fantastic question. It is a good question. Are you? <gasps> Are you? Oh, it is um, August. It's the month of August. It's 14 hours after the sun has come up. And so we are in the evening. Nice, Nick. The that shadows means. are beginning to stretch out very long. That's perfect. It's- That's perfect. So I'm holding this torch in my left hand. I start murmuring the words to a spell and shadow starts to coalesce around my right hand. And the color, if you were watching me, is fading from the area around me. So the light of the torch, what was once a red flame, is like turning to gray. The green of the grass that I'm standing on is becoming just like murky and dark brown. And it sort of coalesces into like a black kind of shadowy circle in my right hand, which I then blast at the Hydra, extending into a large beam that strikes it in its chest. It's Ray of Enfeeblement. Roll a save versus spell with... Uh, I need to look up because these rules haven't come into effect yet, but some sort of minus negative one, to its spell two? save. It might be minus one or two, I'm not sure. Uh, 
Warte. Also Marge. From the end of time. Something like that. I think it's just a PHP spell, no? No, I'm looking up the Shadow Wizard. Is of the... Oh, spells and magic. Yeah. Uh, so for other creatures that suffer minus two penalty on attack rolls and a penalty of one to damage. Has he failed his save? Uh, no, we have to roll the save for the okay, monster. Here we go. So uh, what is this? Moonlight, we would three. say? Twilight, Moonlight. Uh, the... This... Are the options daylight, twilight, moonlight? Because then we're in twilight. The options are bright slash daylight, continual light, weak, daylight, dusk light, twilight. So at twilight, they're going to get a negative one. Okay, hold on. Sunrise on August 7th is 6 a.m. And we are 14 hours after this, so it's 10 p.m. So sun it's set. weak moonlight, porch light, it's negative two. It is dusk. No, not dusk. It is twilight. It is later than dusk. Minus one. one. And this is a save versus spell? Yes. Yeah, save versus spell. All right. Ooh, it oh, fails. Nice. Okay, nice. so Huge. minus two to attack rolls and minus one pair die of damage. Mm. Pair die. Pair die. That's pretty good. That's pretty, That's pretty good. good. Thank you Excellent. to AO for having the table on your Google Sheet. Thank you, AO. The Hydra's turn will come along. Hmm. Is this the right button? Yes. Uh, and the Hydra being blasted with this spell sort of recoils its heads in discomfort um, and frustration and will begin to recede back into the swamp. We, that's a win. That's XP. <laughs> a win right there. Mm-hmm. Now, it's receding at the same rate that it was approaching, which means if you want, you could still probably engage it. Do we Stacey's want to chase it down? Horse. Party, do you want to chase it down? This is the opportunity. Right now is the chance. Like maybe we don't want to chase it down. No, Here's the thing. It's going to come back, and you're not going to have the ray anymore. Well, it's just got weak yeah. I know, but are you really going to start wading into the water? Yeah, that's true. Built? Is that water? Is that deep water? Yeah. Water, I don't know if you can walk through it, and you definitely can't swim, so... We would have... Ex this is near our camp. We would have explored this area extensively. We, we sure. would know if we could You've got some there. shallows, and you've got mm. some deep spots. It's very pocketed. The whole area is just a, a mess of, like, pits and drop-offs and, and crests and rises and sandbars and... You know, you definitely uh, sh shoot. Uh, it, I was about to say, I'll shoot, I'll shoot some arrows at it as it retreats. Neil, you want to roll into initiative? Renatus will, yeah. will move closer with his turn on this. Yeah, well, let's. Initiative. Those of you that want to engage the Hydra, please roll initiative with your bows. Sorry, I had to remove everyone. I'll add you back it's in. Just me. Renatus will throw rocks if he can reach. SD's uh, no, it's going to be way too far to throw rocks. Okay. You will definitely go before it, Garp. You can set your glaive down. You can pull out the bow, notch an arrow, aim a shot. Classic. It's a natural one. Your arrow slips off the bow, tumbles back behind you, lands in the ground. Thank God Stacy's not here to see this. This Thank is not you. very knightly of you. Um, you can get your second shot at the end of the round after the Hydra is now... It would have been... It's 150 feet from Arrakis... So it's like 75 feet away from me, which is still short range. Go ahead and give me a second shot. 20. 20 is a hit. For five. You will do five points of damage. Excellent. Um, and then the Hydra will just continue. And I think by that time, it'll be... Maybe you get one more... What's the max range of your bow? 170. That's in yards, too. Yeah, you can get another two shots. The first one's at minus two. The second one's at minus five. Here you go. Here's the first one. Miss. Nope. Um, that will do yeah. it. That'll hit. Yes. Or three. Um, it's at minus five, but plus two. So it's at minus three. So it's a, an 18, which has not cleared the AC. It's not a crit. All right. You'll do three points of damage to it. Excellent. Um, and the Hydra, oh, no, will, no. the Hydra will retreat into the swamp. Away from sight. 
leaving you oh, safe few arrows and there? sound. I mm-hmm. look over my shoulder and smile at the camp followers. We just defeated a Hydra. <laughs> yes. Yes, we really scared it off. I, uh, I kind of get on my knees and I whisper to Grau, uh, <clears throat> I think we might have to tell him. I, uh, uh, let me have a word with them. I head over to the to the group over here. Oh, uh, uh, Renatus would I like s- to be part of this conversation, and so he will come over too. Yes. I say, uh, listen, friends, um, I'm a spellcaster, and that means when I, when we're in danger, some of the things I might do might prove frightening for those unprepared. And at times, what's necessary for our survival might be something that uh, the common folk outside of our adventures wouldn't fully understand. I hope it goes without saying that whatever magical things happen in and around this group and in our camp, they remain purely the ears of those inside the camp. There's some uncomfortable looks back and forth between your new hirelings. They got hired, they got walked around for a little while. Now they're in a dangerous swamp. And then only once they're in, you know, potentially mortal danger, are they being told that the wizard has, um... What what would you say, dangerous magics? Unprecedented magics? Not that, just, you know, just that they need to... They might see some crazy shit, and they need to keep it to themselves. Okay. I, uh, I, I, I say nothing for you to be concerned about for now. I have, uh, scared the Hydra away, hopefully for the night. Hmm. Melvin will point at the bear. I didn't... And then look at, at August. You, you... I thought you were a warrior. How'd you summon a bear? I look to Arrakis. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. It's magic. There are things at play here that you don't fully understand, and it's probably best for you that you don't. But just know that the bear is a friend, and uh, their presence here only makes us all safer. I didn't see where um, Growl went. You. you- she looks to, to August. You said to go after Growl, but I just, I, I didn't even see where he, how he got past me. I was over by the pack, and then all of a sudden he was just gone. Do you know which way he went so I can go look for him? I'll go find him, and I'll kind of jump on Schnickle Fritz, Schnickle Fritz. and uh, <clears throat> tell them, you, you, Melvin, other lackey, set up the camp for us, please. And Stacy, uh, will you watch over them, my dear? And I'll. Yep. Off. We also need to set fires as a perimeter. Um, one thing I was always told is that uh, uh, a fire at night is the Hydra's blight, and the burning mm. flame will keep it at bay. Mm-hmm. Come Excellent along, my idea. bear friend. And I'll pony off with the bear. <laughs> All right, the two of you can head off. Renatus, you're going to look around this place, and there's a little bit of fuel for a fire here. And you could kind of venture onto the swamp and find some dead wood and bring it back. But there's not like abundant fire. There's not enough wood that you could keep like a perimeter of good fires burning all night long for a week. Well, it would take you like many is, men to gather that. So how do you want to set this, this fire set up? What kind of swamp is this? Because if it's anything like a bog land, there will be peat which traditionally in Ireland was used to heat homes um, and flames. Right. So if there's any peat bogs or any sort of like, uh, uh, you know those mm-hmm. things that, I can't remember what they're called, but basically they're, it's like really thick swampy land that has, um, what do you call it? Tar? It's almost like tar, yeah. You can, you can like cut it up. And as long as there's sunshine, it shouldn't take too long to dry small mm-hmm. cubes of it into into fuel if we have a right. way to keep it off the wet ground. So um, this land didn't used to be a swamp. 
you've, you've lived in this area for a while now. You've heard the ancient legends that once upon a time, um, about 1,500 years ago or so, a mountain range appeared. Um, and at the same time, the mountain... Oh, wait, I had... Oh. It Burp was... I need, I need my map. There was an event that created the majority of this swamp like 1,500 years ago, or a key section of the swamp 1,500 years ago. The land was thrust up in some areas and plummeted down in others. And so this isn't like a swamp that is built up over millennia. This is more of a, a land that was transformed to be below the water table, and then whatever life could manage to survive there did. So we are short on the peat moss, which is um, something that builds slowly over millennia. Yeah, uh, it, my peat is, is, right. is a little bit like a, a shorter timescale version of like coal. Yeah. Um, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. a thick sludge from all decaying plant matter in like acidic swamp. Mm -hmm. um, that mm -hmm. if you dry it out, it actually burns really good. So we don't have much Oops. of that around. Um, mm -hmm. What I will do is, I'm a swamp survivalist, so I'm probably able to figure out a way to make some fires. Maybe like... Yeah. A few like maybe there's a plant here that actually it like is actually quite dry on the inside even though it's a wet condition it has adapted to like osmotically push water out of itself or something or you know whatever it is i i know there is places uh mm -hmm. where dry material could potentially yeah. be found maybe you can definitely collect enough dry material to get some fires going it, the only problem is maintaining the fuel all day for like a week at a time. Um, to do that, you could gather materials, but it's just a, such a large quantity of stuff that would be needed to set like multiple large fires that burn all day and all night. Like everyone in the party would have to just be gathering firewood and going in different directions. It would leave you fairly vulnerable. So well, I'll, the I'll fires say are with for the nighttime. tools. Fire, okay. Fire is only for nighttime. Um, except for the one campfire that keeps us warm. So, okay. It's so a one burning for... fire and then gather fuel to set other fires as needed. Yeah, like, like, perfect. If, if we're going to sleep, we, we make a few perimeter fires around the areas just so that we can see the hydra coming and potentially scare it off with the flames. So, everyone will spend their day gathering firewood so that you can burn fires all night long essentially how far are we away from like the edge of the forest can we just go there and cut down a tree no you're you're day from, from? the okay. forest in either direction is this like a woody um a woody kind of swamp like are there a lot of trees or is it more like there, shrubbery there are lots of tall mangrove trees in the areas where it's a little bit um where it's not so deep and then in the areas where there are no trees that lets you know that the swamp gets pretty deep there so mm. you do have let's some... just cut down this tree right here guys well, the problem is wood has to be dried to be really good firewood and in a swamp that's going to be hard mm -hmm. you don't want living trees you try and burn them it's just going to smoke forever um like me I'm sure. going to smoke I... this shit forever <laughs> <laughs> I, I explained to the party that druids um, man we're, we're you know I explained the idea and the plan to the party I say look um hydras are for, for, for the only thing I know about Hydra is that fire keeps them away. Um, so we will want to set at least a small perimeter of, of fires, maybe three or four, in a triangle, in a square, around an area, to buy us time if it comes back in the night. I don't know if they're nocturnal. I don't know if they go... They, I don't even know if they go asleep. I don't know anything about them. I just remember being told as a kid, fire is the weapon you use to fight a Hydra. So we're going to have to collect a lot of firewood <laughs> if we want to make it through the nights here while escorting. And perhaps, uh, perhaps in the morning we could send one of the camp followers to the southern party and request supplies from Keygate. I think with the Hydra in tow splitting up the party, particularly with these people's lives who are in our incredibly... Uh, uh, they are at our mercy, these camp followers. To send him off into the swamp on his own... Um, I wouldn't know. Perhaps you could go, but we will struggle to find camp enough wood to burn fires day and night around the whole camp. 
Were we? I thought you were just going to burn them at night. Okay, well, at night, night. Well, we, do you think we can get enough firewood to do that? What am I? Uh, it'll, be, it'll be die rolls. We can start with a plan and we can improvise if it begins to fail. It, okay. We only need three or four at night, and that will it won't give us protection, but at least we'll be able to see it and hear it coming, right? Mm-hmm. No, I agree. Let's go plan. Okay. All right. When the uh, when the nobles come, we can just ask them for firewood as well. I'm sure they bring it. <laughs> yep. Tax, if you will. Yeah. Ask them for a couple of laborers to be dropped off with us. We were told that we were going to be tipped as well, right? Mm. For safe passage. I so. I think I'll you were told my hand that you weren't supposed to interact with the nobles at all, oh, and that you I were supposed to completely leave them alone, but... You know, I'm it's fine. Noble rules? Myself. Eh, I'm not lawful, though. So I'm not going to follow the rules. True. Yeah, but this is a quest from Magistrate Zara. Don't you want to... You know, leave her she with a good I'm impression. She knows I'm a loose cannon. I she flirted does. with her when she looked at me like she was going to kill me. She mm. knew what she was doing here. Okay. Like it. Like the confidence. Where's my horse? Oh, no. You walked away with it. Now we're back. Right. You bring back Growl in what form? Uh, I bring Growl back in the middle of the like <clears throat> nighttime when it's you know oh you just go missing f- oh it was already evening right right it, yeah, was, it was already, already twilight evening. okay so i come back i make sure everybody's in their beds in their tents or whatever and i'm like oh come on i'll put him in arrakis's tent and yeah we'll um, handle that in the morning stacy's clearly awake and waiting for you good squire is not gonna just chill in fact Fine. she's kicking herself for not leaving with you to go get growl yeah. that would have been Stacey. the right thing for her to do mm. mm-hmm. sir you're uh, back yeah oh Go go into your tent real quick. Go into our tent. Get it ready for me, please. Did you find did you find Growl? Yeah, he'll be right along. Hanging in the bushes. Okay. She goes and then I hangs out in the tent. Put him in Arrakis' tent. I go in my tent and say, Hey Stacy, I get my bed ready. I ask her, Do you need anything? Are you comfortable? Nope. She she's already made the bed, she's made all the things, she's prepared the area. Oh. She helps you dispro oh, yeah. uh, get off your armor and everything, and um, we can just go oh, my snail. to the night time. No. This is not Boulder's Gate 3. NPCs are not trying to bang you at every twist and turn. Also, this NPC is 15. Let's 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 keep it PG lads. <clears throat> well, let's wait a year, okay? No. Yes, keep it PG. No sex with minors day. in my <laughs> PG media. Sex with adults is okay though. Yes. All right. That night, someone's going to have to keep watch. There's a Hydra that could be out there at any moment. I'll take first watch. We'll not have to worry about it. The Hydra doesn't come back that day. Fantastic. Okay, new spells. What is Mm -hmm. the best way to fight a Hydra? Raven Feeblement. Shit spells, apparently. It was a good fucking spell for that. Yeah, Raven Feeblement did work. Maybe we can get two of them. Scare was fucking useless, although maybe one scare to deal with. (laughs) Um, Today is August 13th. It is the holy holiday of Jubilee. It is a festival um, throughout the world where people dressed up in elaborate costumes, paint their faces or wear masks, play games of skill and balance, have archery competitions, make and sell shitty art, and generally have an open, joyous, and peaceful day. This is an ideal time to make your intentions known to that special someone. It's a time to show off your skills. It's a time to pl- uh, playfully practice the arts of war and fight with sticks. It is a day to make dirt angels, to eat your fill, to drink until you're red in the face, and to run around in circles. It is one of the major high holidays belonging to the goddess Chis of appearances. Nice. And- the way things appear to be. Raluna, goddess of passion. Ephra, goddess of art. Agepa, god of the hunt. Bellum, god of war. Sayer, god of crafting. Quantarius, god of trade. Jexel, god of luck and wine. And last but not least, Wilmator, god of joy. It is the biggest of the high holidays that has the most gods set into it. Is this like, is this Neil Christmas? Is this Arcadia Christmas? Um, oh, this is Valentine's Day. We don't actually have a, a Jubilee this like the, equivalent. This is like the biggest festival, though. Yeah. 
I guess in that way, it's a, it's like Christmas. That's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'd say that Arrakis and probably some other people as well have probably bought some special food items mm. for today with us. Um, so I'm not sure what that would be. Maybe it's just like some, like a little cake and a specific mm -hmm. type of cheese or something like that. Mm. Mm -hmm. that I've some, brought some some lemon cakes and mild cheddar. Yeah. There you go. No, well, mild cheddar. Surely the <laughs> celebration cheese isn't mild cheddar. <laughs> I mean, you would want the good stuff, and so you'd go for the mild cheddar instead of, like, you know, whatever gross cheese that people eat most of the time. No, but it's like an extra mature aged cheddar, not a mild Ugh. cheddar. It's like for Christmas. Gross. Cringe. Whatever you want, dude. Jesus give Christ. Me, give me no, my chicken wait. tendies and my mild cheddar, please. I, yes, I have burnt sausages. And mild cheddar for dinner. Thank you. <laughs> like a true American. Um, yeah, whatever. I, I deserve you know, that. We eat, we eat some yeah. special food. Um, and we try and have a nice time. I mean, obviously, we're on edge. Yeah. You know. Just a hydro out there. Can't celebrate. Is celebrating your family a particularly big important of this festival? Like, No. I mean, you usually have family around during the holidays, but this is not particularly a family holiday. It's more of like a um, a neighborhood or village or town holiday where it brings people together. It's more like um, you know, a harvest festival where everyone will show up and, and snack together as a big group or... Okay, um, uh, Ren will spend his time cooking his tastiest teas from his tea kit, teaching Grau, mm -hmm. who seems to have recently, mm -hmm. um, if he's interested, that is. If, if he's interested in the teas, he will talk him through how the tea kit works and how he can brew really nice tea. And um, he's also teaching the um, camp followers. Um, this is mm -hmm. how you pour the tea. You do it for exactly this many seconds. And he's like, count to 15 for me. And he's like making them count the number of things you wait until you, you know, you strain the tea, you do all the things. Um, and he also, he breaks out one of his really fancy tea balls. It's like a dandelion wrapped in like cloth. And then when you put mm. it in like a big bowl, it like unfurls into a thing mm. and then you scoop tea out and mm. it's like really tasty really fun it's like a party nice. trick excellent well it's well I'll spar with oh, stacy yep uh today wait is Perfect. anyone actually keeping watch for the fucking delegates or are we just chilling it's a, it's a holiday man <laughs> yeah true she, she said off. seven days it was assumed that we were obviously not going to yeah. work today yeah okay right Fair enough. right well, today is the day that you see your first pack of delegates. You can hear the horns blowing in the distance as a group of people with an unrecognizable flag or just an unrecognized flag come marching on through. They carry a litter with some curtains around it. So whoever the fancy important person is can be like resting on the litter and then open the curtains to look out in the swamp or keep it closed to sort of block off their view of the gross area. And they've got trumpeters and, and men carrying the litter around. And they've got like a little small carp that follows behind them with a couple of um, servants that are making sure that nothing's falling off of it and tending to the things, um, keeping it all safe and sound while they themselves get covered in muck. I'll greet them when they kind of start coming up slash my way. And I want to use my mm. prince like dialect. Mm, uh, I have etiquette. Your I was born into nobility, and I'm going to use it as if I am back in the old days where I am mm. actually a prince slash knight. Mm -hmm. And whoever I'm talking to will understand that. Yeah, you've got that highfalutin accent, that excellent vocabulary. Oh, yeah. And the, the older knight who is leading this procession to keep everyone safe will see you approaching and give you a wave, and as you begin to speak, he'll recognize the tone of um, the highborn person, and he'll give you a proper salute um, and ask if this is indeed the way to Keygate. It is. Uh, only the best are out here protecting your journey, sir. Excellent. And we escort you through the swamp? Please. On this day of all days, we could use protection. This is my family's favorite day. And, um, and, uh, which noble family are you with? <clears throat> My family, uh, I, I represent the guardians of the ultralights. Uh, where, which area would I know that this is from or would I not know? You don't know this. The, okay. 
Solom's a big place. You yeah, don't know where huge. this one's from. Okay. Sector. Um, mm. Let's, yeah, I'll uh, yeah. start escorting him through. Perfect. The party can begin to escort them through. And I'll I get... A we should inform them about a the Hydra. Yeah, yeah but before they, before they get going, Ren will come up and say, and he's yeah. also using his etiquette voice. And remember, he's like, mm -hmm. he's gussied up. He's, he's groomed and clean, even though he's been living in a swamp for a day or two. Mm -hmm. um, and he'll, he'll say, Hail, uh, Sir Guardian. Um, the uh, road has been accosted by a hydra in the last couple of nights. We have lit fires to keep it at bay, but we do not know uh, where it is. Uh, we have chased it away, but it is an incredibly dangerous creature. Uh, you would do well to move quickly and quietly with your precious cargo. And I nod towards the thingy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do they open the... Does the person inside open the... What's it called? Oh. Open the, uh, move the screen? Yeah. No, you're, you're having this conversation. Whoever is inside the litter, which is maybe, you know, 30 feet back, is just chilling inside. Specifically, Ren is speaking with the noble accent of his homeland. Same. So someone who is from there would hear it. I'm probably saying mm -hmm. with August. Yep. Excellent. All right. Um, just to, you... as an aside, are we all just pretending like we know that that word that Neil keeps saying is a real word. You keep saying that you're litter. It's, yeah, litter? It's, it's a litter. It's sometimes called a palanquin. It's like a thing where yeah, one guy palanquin. carries in the front, and a guy carries no, in no, the back. Yeah, I know what a palanquin is. But a litter is the same, same, same. They're interchangeable. Mr. Paracetamol. I've not, not heard that before. Litter to me means like... Trash, discard which... upon the ground. Yeah. Like it's, it's even yeah. better than when it's just lit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. Good one. Yeah, but you, the litter is a thing you carry a person on. Okay. Not, it's not, a palanquin has tones of like a nice thing, whereas a litter is more of the general. Like a litter could be a, a stretcher that you would carry a wounded person on or an injured person, or it could be like a fancy thing. Can we um, also say just like on an analytical level, how fucked it is that you think you're so important that you don't even get to use your own fucking legs, and that some two other <laughs> yeah. motherfuckers have to carry you oh, to your destination. Yeah. You lazy, fucking no good son of a bitch, get out and walk. Mm, through the swamp? Yes. Are you get serious? Those feet dirty. Get those fucking but feet it's dirty. It's gross, and they're more important, and therefore they should not have to debase themselves with the grossness of the world. Ren whispers under his breath, eat the rich. Ren, you are the rich. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. Uh, I think we escorted these losers through. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I'm going to just move you to a, a slightly different... Fuck, that's not how that's supposed to happen. Oh, God. Oh, it's by all the gods. It's Does fine. Does this party have a night with them? Yeah. Yes. That's who I talked to at the start. This is what's up to the Hydra. Oh, yeah. He looks like an older knight, like a really experienced warrior who might be past his prime, but has forgotten more about combat than most people will ever know in their lifetime. He's looking, he's probably like level seven or eight. Oh, sick. As we're walking then, I come up to him, sort of with my hood pulled over, and I say, uh, Wizard? He calls out knight. before you have a chance. Mm hmm. These rabble that make up my party are good for nothing. If we see that Hydra, <laughs> we'll kill it together. Rid the swamp of its foul presence. What say you? Dabbler of the red robes. Your selfishness knows no bounds. I'm here to protect my master and no other. I shall not risk their safety to help your petty corner of the world improve he looks around this wasteland of horrors Apologies, I wouldn't sir. leave my master's side for anything it seems valor means something different where I come from I'll leave you to your journey I'll walk away mm -hmm. yeah these are the sorts of emissaries that are being brought under the Empire of Rossi to have this this nice big meeting and chat. And yeah. on this map right here, um, we, this is going to be assuming that you've reached the end of where 
you're going to escort them and they're going to continue moving on from here. What would the marching order of the party look like? Um, how would you arrange yourselves if you were in this area? Mm. Uh, I'd be in the middle. Ren would either be at the front well, yeah. or the back with the dog. Move well, your front. Move your peoples. There's people in my way from where I want Where's to be. Where's my horse? Uh, which, which, you which, should which? be able to move the, the duders. Oh. Are we moving north to south, sorry? Or? Uh, we're going east to west, and it doesn't matter which direction. Yeah, Ren would be probably, if you move, uh, he'd be like here. Okay. If uh, August moves left, I guess. Yeah. Okay, this is how um, we're going to structure ourselves. And Grau, you're in human form, right? It is the next day, so I guess I'm in human form, just following it along. Okay. And Going where are we putting road. our followers? Are they in the middle? Are they at the far back? So I think I'd be at the far back because I have a horse. I can just come up. So I'll be at the back. The followers are kind of be in the middle with Growl. He's good. Okay. And then Renatus is going to be at the front. Perfect. Yeah. Two sniffer dogs. Keep an eye. Excellent. Let's uh, let's just give ourselves just a wee bit of spacing. I'm going to move you around just to get a little bit of. Um, how people might be arranged if this were actually traveling. Mm, Something okay. like... Yeah, because if you're walking, you you tend to... Stacey's so probably back one space. near me. Okay, I'll switch out her. these two. There we go. You... Oh, yeah, for some reason, her settings didn't get saved. There you go. Yeah. You should be able to move Stacy now. Excellent. Um, and it's in this position that the party will be reunited with their dear three-headed friend who's going to appear at the bottom of our map, way down here. I want a Hydra. That same <laughs> three-headed Hydra. Well, You're so. sure of it. He said, I made this encounter and you're going to fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> Who sees it first? Um, probably me. Probably, yeah. Probably you on the horse. Hydra! And I'll pull out my bow and take a shot. All right, roll why don't initiative. you roll into initiative? Well, this is now even more awkward. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta know at some point. Let's just get it over with, yeah. I guess. Rip that and if they get a problem with it, we'll just kill them. What about the well, as murder are... hobos do? Wait, wait, where is the noble in this? I think. Uh, let, you they know, are we on. missing? They're gone. You, yeah, yeah, you you escorted them already, and you're maybe about to head back. Right. We're missing. Are, one. We, are we missing a trick here? I mean, he's a spellcaster. He can polymorph. Doesn't mean he's a druid. That's true. Necessarily. Yeah. Like they're they're not they're not like a peasant, you know. Also, we're very clearly working for the Verasi Empire, so we can just say he's a Verasi. If if they do make the connection, it's like, yeah, he's a Verasi sanctioned druid. Like, he works for the Verasi Empire. So. Why do we care what these two dumb fucks think? Because Grau's nervous of them. You know? We do need to respect Grau's feelings. Yeah, we have to respect Grau. Yeah. All right, we are in initiative. Nacho. Yep. Uh, uh, Nacho, Cheeto, and Renatus will like move as a unit until we're actually oh. in melee. You know, so, why don't we just have Nacho and Cheeto just always go on your turn and not roll them separately? That'll Perfect. just save us a million rolls and headaches. Done. Uh, uh, when I think it matters, I'll roll their initiative. Perfect. Uh, Perfect. Yes. I it's will turn. cast the spell Spectral Hand. Um, you know, it's a pretty standard spell. I raise my right hand in the air at the end and it glows blue. And it's almost like, like a ghost version of my hand like shifts out of my hand the end of the spell and becomes like its own separate thing which then starts to float towards the hydra okay i shoot at uh, one of the heads let me just get you your hand because for some reason it never sticks i have a wandering hand <laughs> watch out everyone yeah careful <laughs> stacy don't be near Stop! Jesus Stop Christ, that. Guys. It's Stop the person it. in our party. For God's sake. Oh, right. there's two now. 
Do you have your own? Oh, you do have your own. Yeah, I pulled it out. Oh. It's like I, I, it's it. No, I, I think you just made it twice now. Where's the oh. hand? I don't see it. Perfect. It's here. Oh, I see it now. Oh, oh, no, it's oh just, sorry. It. There it is. There. Okay. okay. You can make a glow or something. It's not clear how it moves, because this is so far away, and I can't cast Chill Touch till next turn. I'm just having it like be here, and I'll attack with it next turn. Okay. I'm trying hand? to give it. Killed? Yeah. Hmm. Excellent. Not so easily, Okay. 22 AC. Mm. Ooh, holy crap. If they, want, if they want to attack it, it's like, it's getting value. Um, is it just one, any hit will kill it? Yeah. And it does D4 damage to me if killed. Ooh. Excellent. That's why it's a part of my life force, which I think is why it kind of like comes out of its hand when he casts it. it does require a magical attack though. Mm -hmm. Arrakis. Well, it's worth noting that monsters of a certain hit die have attacks that count as magical. Ooh. And a Hydra is certainly high enough hit die. Garp, you were going to not shoot your bow. You've got a short bow, right? Oh, 50, 100, and 170. Um, I think so. Let's just take a look because long bows cannot be used from horseback. Uh, we it just said bow. bow. Okay. Combat... 50, 100, 170. Let me double check. This is one of them there. Small details, which sometimes cascade into amazingly important details. Weapon. Uh, 50, oh. 100, 170 is a longbow, so you're going to have to dismount your horse to do this. That's fine. I jump off the horse. I Perfect. shoot a shot. Yep. You take your you shot. Oof. Boom. It's a hit. Not for one. Nice slow. Excellent. Low, man. You ping it. Renatus, you and your dogs. Uh, yeah, we move. What's uh, my maximum movement is 12? And my dog's max movement is, I assume, similar. Uh, yeah, that's in tens of yards. So you can go, if it's flat ground, you can go 120 yards in a round. I'm in a situation like this with the swamp, um, your movement's gonna have to be quite a bit slower, but you could get almost anywhere you need in a single round if you wanted to run for it. I'm gonna get over here-ish, and on the way, I'm also yeah. gonna call out to the guys as I'm making my way over there. I'm like, oh, get get more fire. We need we need more fire. Get the tinder. Light, light some fires quickly. And I would have had a couple pre-made torches, actually. It's something I should have said. Yes. Some hastily made swamp torches that we put together with some of the whatever fuel was left over. Yes, yeah, some pitchy pieces of wood ready to burn. Uh, the party does have torches in their packs and supplies, and your camp followers will spend their next round gathering them. Growl, there's no cover this time. There's no way to hide it. But maybe, maybe the party will just make the Hydra run away again, right? How is the... Tell me about the tree situation. Uh, there's a couple of dead trees nearby. Yeah. Um, can we can we try maybe capturing one or two of its heads again? Um, well, it depends on where it goes, because there is a tree right here next to it, and there's mm -hmm. this tree over here. So, um, you could try to like wait for the Hydra to get close to one of these trees. If I can get my freaking ruler tool, there we go. Um, if it gets next to one of these trees, it would be pretty grapplable. This one right here is not quite close enough for it. You'd need to just wait and get lucky or lure the Hydra near one of these suckers. Yeah. What do you think? Is thinking? it approaching? It's approaching, right? Oh yeah, it's approaching. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Growl will call out, lure it next to that tree, pointing at the, the one that's close to Renatus there on that island. Mm. And okay. he will ready, um, entangle. All right. Uh, is this the spot where you want to be? Tangle has a range of 80 yards, so you can cast it from anywhere. I just want to know where you physically want to be standing. I'll move a little closer. Perfect. All right. The Hydra will go and it will stomp through the swamp. 
sticking to the easiest to traverse land and coming up right, actually, right where Grau wants it to be. Uh, and its heads will hiss. How far did we end up going? Perfect. It can move here and its three heads are just about ready. Uh, do I get the end of the round shot? Uh, no, because it will get its bite off oh, okay. before. Yeah, it'll come into range and then its heads will come out. The first one going straight for Renatus with a snap and a bite. Whoosh! That's the initiative button, not the attack button. Uh, a snap and a bite with a 14 to hit, which will pierce Renatus for two points of damage as the head comes down, clamps on your shoulder and rips fresh flesh. The next bite is coming for one of your dogs, the one on the south side of you. Oh, it's a 21 for three points of damage. And Oof. the third head is gonna come actually, I don't think the third head can reach the other dog. So the third head is coming right back for Renatus with a snap. And that is a critical hit. It'll do five plus another D6 damage. Uh, uh, five okay. and one, five. six points of damage to you for a total of seven. Ooh, I've taken eight seven damage. Done. You've yeah, taken yeah. eight this round. Jeez. Um, um, second shot updating from... updating my health. You have... Mm, there you go. Like in total. There we uh, go. 16. 16 will do it. For five. Whap! Another arrow and sticks into the creature. I'm going to call out, Stacy. Get the horse. All right, she will do that. Initiative for everybody. Uh, Ground, this would be the round that you are casting Entangle, since it can't be held like magic. Uh, so just roll for it. Did you ready an attack there? Uh, it's, it's not in range, I don't think, right? Because it has reach. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Got reach. it's got greater reach than you. Did you actually say that you had readied an attack? Because if so, you could have made the attack as the head when comes to strike you. Yeah, you. yeah that would have been fine. I didn't think it would be in range, so I didn't say it, but it's what I would have mm. done. I didn't use it. That makes action. sense. Go ahead. You can yeah. use your... You the can use your dog, the dog should as well, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if the dogs can throw themselves at an oncoming head in quite the same way with a readied action. I think that's a feature of right. having, you know, a sword in hand. All right, go ahead and make blade. your attack. Shum. 11's not good enough. You hit the rubbery hide of the Hydra and the blade slides off to the side. Ooh, Ooh, sorry, I need to do initiative. Boom. Excellent. All right, Grau, you rolled incredibly well on your initiative. You're casting Entangle. Entangle. Grau Excellent. fucking vibes back and forth. A power overcomes him as focuses on the tree and the tree starts to move starts to grab for two of the hydra heads mm. it gets a saving throw versus paralyzation which is a failure the tree lashes out it wraps around the hydra's neck um, the grasses the duckweed the lily pads go for the tail go for the claws go for the feet of this thing it is entangled. Renatus fur. It is uh, your turn. Disengage. I disengage and fall back. Do your to... dogs come with you or do you send them to get it? Uh, what? When I glance at August as I run, as I, as I disengage past, do I see him dropping his bow to get his glaive? I see him grabbing his glaive off of the ground. Okay. Well, then I, I tell the dogs to basically... They are acting on their own, so they will they will charge. Got it. Renatus backs out. The dogs <laughs> they run in. Oh, well, they, the dogs I, they run in. Well, I did roll them in this time. Oh, you did. I thought it might matter. Okay, but they, well, then we will deal Cheeto with them individually. Act on my turn. Yeah. All right. Melvin is getting the torches. Cheeto runs in and. Um, give me a, 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 a D2. I need a 50-50 from you. You want to roll high, Renatus. Boom. Excellent. Cheeto goes to the right spot and uh, can make his attack. Cheeto, get him, Cheeto. Uh, I think I just pressed this. 
bite it is but it's only a six cheetah will go up and like get a bite on one of the feet of the the hydra and sort of like rrr, 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 but his teeth are on the claws <laughs> and does no damage melvin's got the torch stacy comes running forward she grabs the horse and she will pull the horse back out the bomb proof pony who's not afraid of the hydra um then you can back out over here nacho nacho will go in nacho charges um, Get him, Nacho! Nacho will charge, leaping heroically and missing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same role as the last one. Arrakis, it's your turn. <clears throat> Once again, I cast my spell, summoning a ball of shadowy energy, and cast it as a beam, a ray of enfeeblement towards the Hydra. Um, there you go. Save that spell. You tell what time it is, it is as well. It is a pass. What time is it? Time, uh, this time is... Closer to midday, full daylight. It's human time. Yep. Must. Rudy, who actually only has one D in his name. He's not Ruddy. He is Rudy. Um, also is preparing torches this round. They're both doing it. The Hydra will go and Nacho, Cheeto. It was really nice getting Nacho. to know you. Don't forget, two of the heads are entangled. Mm -hmm. Well, let's start with the first head. It's going for Nacho. Quap with a nine Missed. is no good. Now, Entangle. We never put Entangle in chat. There's this great little passage <laughs> in here. How By means of the spell, it, the Entangle is able to cause plants in the area effect to entangle creatures within the area. The grasses, weeds, bushes, and even trees warp, twist, and entwine about the creatures, holding them fast for the duration of the spell. Any creature in the area is subject to this effect. A creature that rolls a successful saving throw versus spell can escape the area, moving only at 10 feet per round until it's out of the area. Exceptionally large or strong creatures may suffer little or no distress from the spell at the DM's option based on the strength of the entangling plants. Now, the plants on the ground, not a big deal. The duckweed grabbing the sky, don't even care. The tree nearby reaching for the necks, however, that is a strong source. Um, and so we're gonna say that one of the two heads is successfully entangled by the strong branches of the tree and the other like little tiny branches twiggy branches and leaves wrap out and the second head can rip itself free with little to no distress and take a bite at cheeto whap with a Missed nine again. to hit oh. is a miss let's go garp That's um i have reached two mm -hmm. uh so i should be able to get like you're gonna have here? to get here or here, but you—I don't know if you want to be actually standing in the swamp. Let me go over. Well, I'll go over here then. Over there. Yeah. Which head is entangled right now? Depends. Uh, the far on right one. Uh, do I get bonuses for that since it's prone? I don't. I mean, that's what I would call it. Yes. Held? You will get a plus two to hit for that. All right. Uh, here's my glaive attack then. <clears throat> Eighteen. Eighteen. Excellent. For six damage. Whoosh. You find once you get past the rubbery hide, the inner flesh of the Hydra just parts easily before your blade, spilling blood on the ground in a, a small shower. There again. Um, I think that is the entire round. Let's roll initiative. Boom, let's go. Uh, what would you like me to roll to throw a torch? Don't forget about your Reed? spectral hand, Nick. Yeah, I know, but I'm okay. in the Raven field once more. Can't you move it with a free action just so it might attack the hand? <clears throat> mm -hmm. I need to cast Chill Touch before it'll do something. Yeah, this is not a <clears throat> mage hand. It's not a movable thing. Uh, right. Da -da 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 -da. Renata's fur. Bite, bite, move. Bite. Okay, that's everybody in the party. Um, oh, except for you and you are having to get out your torches. Perfect. All right. First up is Nacho. Nacho already engaged with this beast. Get him, Nacho. Get him, buddy. What bam? Nice. 16 is a hit. Seven, Seven points damage. of damage? You know yeah. what happens is Nacho 
You ever seen a dog like try to hold on to something where it'll use its front legs to kind of like try and grip from the sides? This is exactly what happens as Nacho hurls itself at one of the Hydra heads, grabs onto it the teeth and then the, uh, the, the front dog legs hold onto it as Nacho like crashes and rips its head back and forth, digging into the monster for seven points of damage. Amazing. Yeah, that is a lot of damage. Do dogs get XP? Can you, is dog a class? Can you level up no. dog? Okay. We cannot level up dog. Dog is dog and never anything more. All right. Growl. Growl. Uh, growl. I mean, how's it looking up there, guys? You guys are doing... Growl looks back at the part of the people following him. He shrugs. Fire growl. We'll do this would happen. We, we need fire. Need fire? They fear the flame. Yeah, let me turn um, into a fucking dragon. What do you mean? Growl turns into a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Arrakis. Um, oh, no, not Arrakis. Growl, you still have a whole, you know, a move or an attack. There's no reason to move this turn. All I do is let myself get attacked. Mm -hmm. I might as well move next turn and do some mm -hmm. damage myself. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. Oh, and that should restore any missing HP that you whoops, ever could have possibly had. But you should uh, be at full. There we go. I stay where I'm at. Arrakis. Spells are coming out. <clears throat> yeah, I try a second Rave Enfeeblement, blasting at this Hydra. Hopefully it mm. fails at save this time. Uh, yes. It's a failure, right? It's daylight. Does it yes, have bonuses two. to its spells? Well, plus two, yeah, but still a fail. All right, excellent. Um, it is a weakened and enfeebled Hydra. Nice. Rudy brings forth a torch to Renatus. Um, I will hand it to you. Yoink it. I take that torch. And then we'll back off. Melvin will come forth with a torch um, and go to Arrakis because she's not getting anywhere near the Hydra and hand you a torch, Arrakis. Sure, I take it. And then back the fuck off. And then I tell them Renatus. to get out of here. Go with Stacy. Go with Stacy. Um, go to Stacy. I step forward a few steps. Um, whatever I think would be torch tossing range. I don't know what kind of footage you want to give me on that. You can toss a torch 30 feet. That's totally legit. Yeah, I fling a torch. Uh, what do you want? 1d20 plus 2. Yeah, you're just you're just throwing the torch at the creature, right? Yeah, I'm trying to scare. I'm like, I assume yeah. it's a it's afraid of fire. Like most creatures yeah. are afraid of fire. Fire drives away creatures. Throw a fire at it. Maybe it'll do damage. Hundred percent. Roll it. Uh, eight. Eight. The torch will sail past one of the hydras and lands psh, with a hiss and a sizzle in the swamp at its feet. It was a bad roll, dude. Yeah, it was. It was rough. The footing rough. wasn't very good. Yeah, you know, it was. It would have been heroic if I rolled a nat twenty, but you know, it would. look, it's fine. Sometimes the you, dogs. you need villagers just to throw torches at the monsters, right? Yeah, yeah. Cheeto. If we had give enough me villagers, oh, you mean Cheeto attack roll? Make it as good as the last one. Let Cheeto? the dogs kill the Hydra. Uh, it's not gonna happen. Cheeto. Cheeto is. She does the red-headed stepchild. Oh, oh my god! Oh, he gets him though. Two damage. That's one shy of a crit. crit. Yeah. But Damn. it is minimum damage. Okay. Um, well, I'll take it. Big roll from All right. Big roll. Taking the hat off. I attacked the same it. one I attacked before. 15. 15 is a hit because it's the same one. You can hold 11. on and with 11 points of damage, you will just completely sunder Shoot. one of its heads. Um, and we're going to subtract 11 and we are going to doodle one fewer head. This is going surprisingly nice. well. <laughs> it's now. not even <laughs> remotely a problem. Uh, there are two heads left. One of them goes for Cheeto. <laughs> 18 for two and the other one is gonna go for dear friend up here augustus with a bite uh, it's a 14 yes. is no good second that attack is for me. second attack for you 16 will hit seven 
and you will plunge the weapon into the heart of the creature who being entangled, being ripped apart by dogs and arrows and glaives and rays of enfeeblement and nearby torches uh, will stop its movement and fall to the ground, seemingly dead. Uh, But that was a little easy. I will continue cutting off the heads. I start running forward. Fire! Fire! With my torch aloft as I run up to the corpse of the Hydra and I'll plunge the flame into the stump of the one severed head. Mm-hmm. Throw another attack out there for you if you want it for another head. Yeah, I mean, it's it's prone on the ground. You don't need attack rolls anymore. It's it's dead, right? I'm chopping off all of the heads then. Yeah. Yeah, you just start chopping off the heads. It's fine. Hy- I- Hydras are a creature that, like would be in folklore, you know? Like, like people yeah. tell you, like, oh, don't fuck with wolves, whatever. Like, people are like, oh, if you're in the swamp, watch out for the Hydra. You gotta, you yeah. know, heroes of old would cut off their heads and... Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we would... We're not just... We're not just metagaming here, right? We would no, know... Not, I mean, no, no. this is definitely... A, this is a thing. Like, you and I know the, the story of Hercules and the Linnean Hydra, and every time you chopped off a head, two heads would grow back in the same spot. And so you yep. needed fire and steel at the same time in order to keep it dead. This one didn't grow back heads as you chopped them off. Um, okay. But you can never go wrong with burning the corpse of your enemy, right? Yeah, I think we That's just always a... use the torch the on the stumps and, and then yeah. and then make a giant fire if we've gone off firewood to do so. Which maybe we don't. Well, uh, it's while you are hacking this thing to bits to make sure that it never rises again, that someone pokes their head up and sees that there is another diplomatic envoy coming on down the road. But this diplomatic envoy is unlike the others you're going to be meeting. This diplomatic envoy carries a stag with a rose in its mouth Uh, on its flag. It is the sigil of the the house that ruled Augustus. Ren and Ren, go. I'll deal with the Hydra. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I turn and I look, and I dust myself off of because I you know I got in there. I was helping out. I dust myself off of Hydra blood, and then thinking I mean, you can I want to look smear a little more the impressive. Hydra blood on you. I I grab a little Hydra blood and I put it in my face like I was in the combat. You know, making myself mm. look a little bit more. Mm. Um, Excellent. And I make my way to the delegation. Wait, as um, Ren, like, as Ren's at the as Ren's at the Hydra, I grab him by his sleeve and I say, Ren, don't do anything stupid. You don't know what's going on back there. If there's new people in charge, August is in great danger. What could I do? I'm sure you'll make the right choice. I'll let him go. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but Brown's um, going to hide. Smart. Yeah, I'll make my way over to the delegation, uh, covered in blood, guts, mud, and all sorts of bad stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And I will say hail to whoever's at the front of their caravan. Do you notice them? Like, do you recognize them? Do I recognize anyone in the caravan? Um, e- no. Actually, you should. You've been... If any of the people... This was 10 years ago. You would know exactly who was leading this, but that person is not here. This is a new face to you. There's a lot of faces, right? Maybe they just pulled someone from a different area. Maybe they've been given certain people to work with. Um, Maybe someone has been promoted through the ranks who was just like way too junior, but they've made a name for themselves and now now they're here. But this face is completely unfamiliar to you. Um, looking to the servants who are carrying the palanquin upon which the diplomat or the envoy or the prince or princess or whatever is sta- uh, sitting, you recognize the faces of the servants. These are servants that have served the nefarious family for, not the nefarious family, the Vantis family for generations. Um, I mean, obviously not these ones, but it, that was a bad phrasing. You recognize uh... these servants as they used to serve the old king. I mean, let me, Vantis was the kingdom that we were a barony under. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I walk up and mm-hmm. I, I, I hail the, I presume there is a man at arms at the front of their caravan. 
There is indeed. There is a young, youngish knight, maybe, you know, 42 years old. Young for like a knight leading a caravan like this. <clears throat> and he will give you a salute with his sword, which is already drawn because they can see the Hydra being hacked to bits here, and say, <clears throat> make way for King Culp of Vantis. I say, hail, we are your escort. Uh, we have cleared the road of a Hydra. Um, make way. We already did. Are you using a figure of speech? From home? He says. <laughs> that is a I, good point. I, I giggle. I, I Ren laughs, breaking character, and leans over and gives him like a little punch on the arm and says, "I'm just let an old dog have his old tricks." Hey, how are things in Vantis? Mr. Moon asked a very good question. Are you are you tr- using the accent of the place from which you are from, the- or are you trying to hide your accent? Oh, no, I'm using it, because I want to know. I want to know stuff about the homeland. Yeah, when you ask about what's going on with Vantis, this person regards you. You can tell from the sound of your voice that you're from this region. And he looks at your face, trying to see if he might recognize you. We need a... I need a secret GM roll check. He does not recognize you. Okay. All is well. The pretenders have been laid waste. You may rest easy, young man. The kingdom is safe. (laughs) I haven't been called young in a long time. Thank you for the compliment, good sir. Although you will find no comfort in my bed, although I'm sure the young ladies at the taverns like that kind of attitude. Um, Pretenders, I did not know. I have been away for many years. What pretenders have been slain and laid low? A great many. All those that brought shame to our kingdom, all those that were weak in their ways, those whose ambitions lay elsewhere, those who would undermine authority and or divine right of rule for their own petty advancements. Ah, Sounds like things are back to normal there then anyway. That's exactly what was going on the whole time I was there. And I cannot give him a little wink, a little, you know, (laughs) <laughs> and he gives you a scowl when you're like, oh, that's just how things have always been. He's clearly proud of these things that have been done, and you're you're dismissing this, pretending like it's always been this way, that he's no different, that the empire, the kingdom's no different than it used to be. You can see the, the, um, the disapproval in his I, eyes. Noticing the disapproval, I, I, I kind of reach out and I touch him on the elbow and I say, apologies, good sir. Um, we have just been in combat. My my spirits were high from slaying the beast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as I touch him on the elbow, how many people are looking? Nice. Uh, <laughs> well, there's the your party, which we don't really care about. Then there's the four people who are carrying the palanquin. Two of them can probably see you from this spot. Then there's some servants behind them, and he's got like a, I f- think four of them can see. <sighs> nope. I feel like it's too risky to try to steal something from this guy, even though Ren really wants to, and I just withdraw my hand. And, Is this the king uh, that we knew about oh before? No, you're not familiar with this name, King Colt? Who was the old king of Vantis? Oh, it's somewhere in my notes. I can find the name, but it'll take it's me a fine. minute. It, it's, it, but it is a different person. It's a different person. You've never heard of King Colt. Um, uh, and as the, uh, the palanquin begins to move forward, all of a sudden it stops and the, the curtain parts ever so slightly. And looking I out look. from behind it is a deeply familiar, if somewhat older, feminine face. You recognize the emissary resting in this palanquin is none other than your wife. Oh, she will gaze hey. out <laughs> and she'll look in your direction I will look and my jaw will slacken. And then she will let the curtain fall again and give the quiet move forward and the party will move on without stopping, without stopping to say hello or anything. But she did look out, made eye contact with you and then let the curtain fall again before the party processes. Well, I think we should go like turn by turn, like on this. Yeah, Yeah, my turn, what are you gonna do? 
I do have a question. I don't know what Ren does. Um, Ren? How did the how did the guard respond to my apology for? Um, he took it well. He didn't like greet you back, but his scowl stopped, and he just like went to move on with his day. Like, okay, you fucked up. You made apologies. They're big on appearances there, and that you showed some level of subservience and apologeticness. Like you did the right thing. You made sure that he saved all the face that he needed. He doesn't really care about how you come off, but like his status is protected because of your actions, and so he can continue peacefully. R- Ren will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do. A willpower check to see if he says his wife's name out loud. Based. All right. Fucking fail it. Would he? Would he say it? Would he say quiet or would it hit him? I'm trying to think. How would he <sighs> feel in this moment after the adrenaline of fighting a Hydra? He hasn't seen her in years. He's the love of his life. And she's He's alive. the love she's of his here. life. She's literally a curtain away from him. Why did you break up? Like, did she dump you because you got old? He didn't break up. He got cast out of the kingdom. Fuck. Yeah, he got cast out and he went to help out August. But that would mean because your your society is so face is so important that if you're cast out, she couldn't like she can't be seen with you. Your your Ren says the first like couples like like if if i'm gonna say the name uh nick or 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 jan he'll he'll start with the the beginning of the syllable but then stop he'll just say like yeah and he'll catch himself realizing the position he'll put her in if he calls out to her or even like tries to approach it and he is like rooted to the ground and cannot move he's like he is whole person by this because every part of him is fighting in every direction because all he wants to do is run to the palanquin, to the litter, and pull back the curtain and confirm that he did indeed see his wife there. And then the other part of him is all of the consequences of doing that raining down upon him, taking everything away from him again that he doesn't even have anymore. So he just stays rooted and dumbfounded. And people will notice that there's something weird about him as they yeah, pass. Yeah, as the palanquin kind of goes by, I'll, like, look up after, you know, stabbing the Hydra some more, <clears throat> like, give a nod to the guard. And then um, as it keeps going, I'll see Ren standing over there, and I'll call, and I'll say, Ren, you okay? Knowing. Not me, no, but my aunt heard my voice as well. Then. I'll kind of walk over there. Something happened? Um, did we ever agree on what my wife's name was? Mm-mm. You can name her whatever you want. Uh, her name will be Orionus. Orionus? Orionus. No, that sounds like anus. Hold on. Uh, I'll ask Neil a question while you figure it out. Great uh, name. I love how it. How many like guards are there in this procession? Like soldier guards? Like fighter yeah, capable? Like knights. Uh, there's the lead knight who was in his like early 40s and he had two assistant warriors with him. Uh, and he's probably set level somewhere between level six and level nine, yeah. which is a huge range, but <clears throat> enough to kill us all, though, probably. Ren, you look like you've seen a ghost. Um, was it father? It was, it was Fausta. Fausta is in the litter. She's right there. Ren, like, instinctively reaches for his shadow blade. And his hilt. Did you see her? She's she's there. It's her. She's right there. And I can't... Then let's go get her. We... We can't. She's the emissary. She's the delegate. If they knew... That we were in contact with her we would ruin her life even more than it has been but I need to get in touch with her when this is all said and done we need to get to Veilbrook you go we can hold this you go to Veilbrook you you find her we'll be alright without you leave Cheeto and Nacho find her in the city use your new abilities that you've gotten 
she, will she even recognize me? Does she even know who I am anymore? Does she even care about me anymore? There's only one way to find out. Is there even anything between us anymore? What if I'm just chasing ghosts? You had a whole lifetime together. Sure, she wants to see you again. Did do you feel like she recognized you when you looked at her? I don't know. I was transfixed by her stare. Um, mm. I can't leave you guys. This is my quest. <laughs> we have to fulfill. <sighs> no, Ren, I think you should go and find her in the city. <clears throat> go have a solo episode. We can just get out of character, though. Can't we just go to the city when... I don't think we need to split the party. We can just go there after this. She'd have to pass um, back through here anyway. Yeah, this is this is more of an error character issue. Like, should I yeah, go I, to the city alone? I think that it'd be cool if you went and did, like, a... we has got a lot of time this next week. You can do, like, a three-hour solo session of you going and finding her and talking to her and then coming back. Uh, we will absolutely be fine in this one. Oh, that, that, could be, that could be cool, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will... I think you should go after her. I will grab August's hand in our family grip, and I will catch up. I will attempt to catch up with the caravan and well, tell yeah, them. Before, if, if you, before you leave, because you've got time to talk about this, right? You know it's a long walk from here, from, from the edge of the swamp, from Keygate to Valebrook is a long journey, right? That's, that takes like a week at least. You're only supposed to be here for another few days. That's at least a week there. It's at least a week back. Sure. Who knows how long things are going to take we there. If you up. leave now, you'll literally catch her on the road. So where do you want to meet her? Do you, yeah. do you want to talk to her in the city? Do you want to catch her on the road? Do you want to catch her before the meeting or after the meeting? Like how I think do you I want to catch this? up with her caravan and I'll explain to them. Um, my party decided that I, since I am wounded, um, uh, I should come back and bring word of the dead. Hydra and you know my party mm -hmm. will hold the road and, and protect the passage of the rest of the emissaries but I, I need to come back and report that this, you know we fought a Hydra we killed a Hydra um, before I go I do say to the party like um, you know does anyone like maybe Hydra meat is valuable see what you can store and take from the Hydra that will keep I don't know is Hydra flesh made no, well, I, mean, I was going to say that I mean if there I, I think I would know I run a magic shop so if there's any components that I can harvest off said Hydra I'd be Hydra teeth, Maybe Hydra it's teeth, it's bones, eyes, it's Hydra tongues. There, on that same economics table that we've linked, there is a tab called Spell Components, which lists every spell component in the game. Um, and wow. there are really? some other details about them. Yeah. Uh, and I control left on there revealed nothing Hydra related. So there's no okay. active spell ingredients that need Hydra bits, but that doesn't mean that you can't. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, a yeah, Hydra like eye is useful for something. Things. Uh, yeah. People are definitely going to be using powdered hydra teeth as like an aphrodisiac. That's like, oh, yeah, you definitely. know, homeopathic medicine 101. This has been diluted four million times. It's uh, like, you know, super strong now. Yeah. Ren, yeah. before you go, here, I'll take off my cheese necklace worth a ton of money and I'll hand it to you. You need gold or anything to, to see your wife. Use this. Uh, is this one worth 2,000 gold? Yeah, but. You can't give this to me. This is the only thing that ties you to the family. If I lose this, you have nothing. And I hand it back to him and I refuse to take it. Oh my gosh. All right. We're yeah. going to end our session. I take off the gold. I give you 13 gold. 145 silver. I'll leave you with that. Perfect. 13 gold? 13 and 145 silver. Yeah, just enough to encumber me. Let them... It's fine. Um, you can head off to catch up, and we're gonna end our session here. But before we do, we're gonna we're gonna check in with our players, our characters. Um, we're gonna start with Arrakis. Because you've been gone from your home for a long time, too. You've been gone for an age. You've left fam friends, family, everything behind. You've traveled the road, trying to stay out of danger and escaping one situation after another. You finally came to this place, made these friends, have been building a life. And now you get to see in this moment that 
these two people who you consider close friends like have a whole other life without you this thing that they would if they could they would leave you in the dust to return to they have love yeah. they have family how does that sit with arrakis Are you... i don't think that bothers him too much i mean he's a loner he's been a loner his whole life uh I feel like he's closer to Growl than any of the than the other two mm -hmm. anyway anyway, so. Um yeah, I don't think it's Does it feel it... like this separates you from that all? Do like does it create extra distance or is it not even a factor? I think it creates some extra distance, or at least it's it's making them more than just people that exist to sort of help him achieve his whims. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got their own goals and they're not always gonna be around, but I don't think that's necessarily like too upsetting for him at this stage. Okay. A similar question to Growl. You've been trying to figure out who you are, what you are, where your past is, where you're from. What What is the deal with you? And these people have been great. They've been nice. Um, but up until now, they've kind of only been around to be friends with you. And now you're getting another look at, oh yeah, these friends of mine have these big complex lives, wives, families, children perhaps, like... They have other things. How does that how does that sit with Growl? I feel like he's mostly upset because it seems like they found <laughs> something they were looking for just oh. on the road. And it it's it's not so much that they have a life outside of this. It's more that they know who they are. They have a past, they have a community, they have history. Which is the exact thing that he's lacking, right? Mm -hmm. He has no one... Like, he ran into Forrest that one time that he vaguely remembered, but he doesn't have a person that's like, he can see and he can be like, whoa, that's the person from my past, and this is all the things I share with them. He doesn't have any of that. Doesn't feel good. Yeah. And what about your your desire to remain to hide your druidic abilities and remain remain sort of anonymous you you vouched not vouched you voiced this complaint and everyone sort of brushed it off and then they hired all these people and then immediately it became apparent that you had to like transform into a bear in front of these brand new faces yep. are you are you concerned about what these people might say or do or are you more concerned that your friends just dismissed your concerns or or does that show like equality that they they're not babying you? Is this it like seemed, a grown up moment? It seems like they were trying to compromise. I think that felt good. Arrakis in particular put a lot of effort in, and I mean Ren said that he would take care of things. Um yeah. and honestly, I mean he's been on the run for a while. They've been changing into bears in front of people and he's been okay. Maybe he's been overestimating the importance of this a little bit. Um he feels like he's been able to figure it out so far, so if he'd been super afraid of it, but like it was a life or death situation, right? What else was there to do? Um, okay. we'll see where it goes from here. I guess if he, he has to be way more on the, on the, on the run now, it's obviously going to feel bad in retrospect, but for now, mm -hmm. I think it's okay. Okay. August. Yep. You've been yearning for some news of home. And I don't know how much of that conversation August was able to overhear, or if you were still hacking at the Hydra when Renatus was talking with the guard, mm. and he was saying, you know, King Culp, um, and getting rid of all, you know, purging the land of the traitors or the unfaithful or whatever he, you know, is referring to what happened to you, more or less. Yeah. Um, I don't think August heard any of it. I think he was too busy with mm. the Hydra. The only thing he noticed slash saw was... Ren's appearance and his actions at the end. Mm. Um, and then when he talked to him, he kind of figured out that the bare minimum he saw his wife and something weird happened. So, mm. Okay. Is, does this, is this a moment of hope then for August? I think Joy, it's a moment fear? of <clears throat> hope for him and his wife. Um, August on some level feels bad that Ren did give up everything. And I think when mm. he was in prison, he thought a lot about that. Um, and his actions, you know, Ren gave up his entire existence to help him and help him, like, continue on. Mm -hmm. Left his wife for him. Mm -hmm. I think now he feels like he needs to do everything in his power to get her back to him. Okay. Well, Ren, if we're gonna do a solo session with you, I'm gonna leave your feedback 
for the whole session, and we'll dig into it a little bit more deeply. Uh, and that will round us. Absolutely. And I am really excited for how this could play out. Excellent. We're going to round out our session right now, and we'll catch you next time for Outcasts or on the after show right after this. See you there. Thanks for Bye. watching.